final stop of the 2019 regular season is in Anaheim, California, where tonight the Houston Astros take on the Los Angeles Angels. The Astros come in with a franchise best 104 wins as they open up a four-game series with Alex Bregman getting a chance to DH tonight. The Astros are two games better than the Los Angeles Dodgers for the best record in baseball. Any win by Houston or a Yankees loss will give them the number one seed in the AL playoffs. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Southern California. I'm Todd Callis with Jeff Blum and Blummer. Here we go. Final four games of the year. Yep, let's live it up. We got four more after or three more after dark and then that day game on Sunday where everybody's playing at the same time. That'll be a lot of fun. That will be. And there's still some things to decide for the Astros, some individual accomplishments and also trying to lock up that one seed in the playoffs as the Astros play this four game series against the Angels. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. As good as the Astros have been setting the franchise record with 104 wins, there is still something to play for the American League home field advantage. The magic number for two to get that home field advantage throughout the World Series is what these guys are shooting for and also making franchise history with a couple more wins. But there are some guys in this lineup that are going to go out there and try and make a statement in these last four games. Alex Bregman will be DHing today, trying to maximize the opportunity against Mike Trout's team to maybe overtake that MVP race. Bregman has reached a .1 away in baseball reference war with a big series in Seattle, so he is closing down fast on Mike Trout. And in the AL Cy Young race, both these guys get a start in this series. Yeah, that could come down to the, maybe the five innings that these guys pitch a piece and how they go out there. We know Garrett Cole already has is the strikeout king this season. But Justin Verlander going for that 21st save and trying to get his ERA just under Garrett Cole, who set the bar at 3.52 in his last start. So the last two starts of this season are going to determine the Cy Young winner. The next two starts could determine who is the pitcher in Game 4 of the ALDS. Jose Urquidy will get the ball tomorrow for the Astros in Game 2 of this series. And tonight, Wade Miley, who has really struggled in September, one last chance to make an impression. We're getting ready for baseball from Anaheim after this. Astros baseball on AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Budweiser. Plan ahead for a safe ride home from your friends at Silver Eagle Distributors, Houston. By Shoppers John Deere, your local John Deere dealer with eight area locations. And by Wingstop, where... ...have made their way to the West Coast. They are in Anaheim getting ready to take on the Angels, and they just wrapped up a season series with Seattle where they completely dominated that team 18-1 and over the season. And against the Angels, played pretty well as well, 11-4, and but still have four games left right here in Anaheim to finish off the regular season. And in those wins, we've seen some big days offensively for this Astros club. It's what they've done all season, but... Specifically against the Halos, it's our get out and play presented by Toyota. Remember, we just saw them in Houston as well, but you're looking at the numbers right there. As a team, the OPS close to 1,000. That's as a team and then averaging seven and a half runs per game. But I mentioned just saw them in Houston. That was a memorable day as well. It was Justin Verlander and company getting a 13 to 5 win that day. George Springer hitting three home runs in that win to clinch the AL West Division title. Springer with eight home runs against the Halos this year. 15 RBI. Bregman with seven. Brantley almost a 400 hitter against this team. Yuli Gurriel uh, over that 415. So some impressive performances against them and chance to add those numbers over the weekend as well. TK? You're right about that, Julia. A couple guys who are getting the night off there, Jose Altuve and Jordan Alvarez, sitting next to Jose Arquiti, who will make the start tomorrow. A little different-looking lineup with George Springer and Josh Reddick. Reddick is in there, but Springer getting the night off. So here is how A.J. has it lined up. Miles Straw will lead off for the second time this year. He'll play second base for the first time in the major leagues as a starter. Michael Brantley will bat second, followed by Alex Bregman, who will D.H., Kyle Tucker bats clean up for the first time. Aledmus Diaz at first base. Josh Reddick will be in center field. Abraham Toro at third. Martin Maldonado behind the plate. And Jack Mayfield at shortstop batting ninth. It's going to be right-hander Jaime Berea going for the Los Angeles, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. This will be his 19th game, 13th start on the season. That is a losing record at 4-10. 78 and a third innings pitched. He has allowed 22 home runs this season. And last time out, he allowed four home runs to the Houston Astros in Minute Maid Park. That was his last start. He only lasted two and two-thirds innings. That's been a rough go for Berea. Then starts he has made. The team hasn't won a game since July 24th. 
all the way back against the Dodgers. He'll make the start tonight, and here's how the defense will line up behind Berea. Cole Calhoun gets the start in right field. Brian Goodwin will be in center. Michael Hermosillo will be in the left field. The infield has Albert Pujols making another start at first. That's number 95 for him. That matches the most starts he's made at first base since 2015 when he started 95 games. Second baseman will be David Fletcher. Left side, you've got Caleb Coward at third, and the gold glover, Angleton Simmons at short. Kevin Smith behind the plate, and we are ready to go on a Thursday night. A.J. Hinch wanting to give some guys the night off after a late arrival here in Southern California, flying after the night game in Seattle. So that's why you see a little different look to the lineup with Miles Straw leading off. He swings to the first pitch and pops one up. David Fletcher takes charge. The second baseman puts it away, and that's how this game starts. One pitch and one out. Yeah, it wouldn't have been too bad if the Astros could have flown into Orange County and landed in Orange County. But with that curfew here at John Wayne Airport, of course we had to fly into LAX and bus over, so a little bit of an extended road trip with the bus in there, so A.J. Hinch taking care of some of the veterans. Give him a day of rest. Team rolled into the hotel right around 3 in the morning last night. Michael Brantley had the day off yesterday, so that's why he is one of the regulars in there tonight. And he's playing right field tonight and batting second as he takes one outside for ball one. Brantley coming in fourth in the American League with that 313 batting average. Chops one on the ground to second base where Fletcher makes the play. And Berea on three pitches has a couple of outs in this first inning. Here is Alex Bregman. Bregman's baseball reference war now up to 8.2 with Mike Trout just ahead of him at 8.3. Bregman had a huge series in Seattle. Five for eight with a home run. As he is putting up some big numbers and making quite a run at this American League MVP. Bregman, there you see the breakdown. Stats Inc., baseball reference, fan graphs, and how close things have gotten in the war department. Bregman trailed by... More than 1.0 at the time Trout was out for the year, and now he has really made it a little different conversation. I think that's pretty incredible what Alex Bregman has been able to do because we talk about peripherals and bringing in some of those modern-day analytics to try and address who that MVP or who that best player is. And Alex has really closed the gap here lately, putting up some big numbers at 40th home run, a big number for him. And his celebration. OPS at 1,016, good for third in the American League. Fouls that pitch away. It's two and two. That was one of the rare pitches that might have been outside of the zone that Bregman swung at. He's got an 18.5% chase rate. See what that pitch was that TK was talking about on our MD Anderson strike zone, starting on the outside edge and breaking off the plate. And for Alex Bregman, that, that is chasing. It is the second lowest chase rate. Only Kevin Biggio lower than Bregman and swinging the pitches outside of the zone. Three plays made by David Fletcher. That last one in the shift and a 1-2-3 start for Berea. Ander is on the mound for the Houston Astros. And let's take a look back at his road starts this season. In his last eight starts, he has been very good. A 5-0 record, a 2.38 ERA, and the Astros in that time are 7-1. That is a beautiful winning record for Wade Miley. We are trying to bring back some of that good flavor that he had early on in the season, and the numbers right now show in the last five, that he, or last eight that he was very good on the road. Lineup he will face tonight for the Angels has David Fletcher leading off at second base. Angleton Simmons bat second, followed by Albert Pujols. Cole Calhoun is in right field, hitting in the cleanup spot. Kevin Smith behind the plate, Taylor Ward DHs, Brian Goodwin, Caleb Cowart, and Michael Hermosillo. As Wade delivers a strike to start his 33rd time around on the mound. And of his 33 starts this year, this one might have the most significance because it's his last chance to make 
a positive impression on A.J. Hinch and the coaching staff leading into the postseason. And it's been a rough month of September with that one good start being on the road in Kansas City. He got ahead of Fletcher 0-2. And Fletcher grounds one to short. Jack Mayfield makes the play, and that's how the bottom of the first begins. Astros starting defense will have Josh Reddick patrolling center field. He's got Kyle Tucker in left and Michael Brantley in right. On the infield, you saw Jack Mayfield make that first play. He has Abraham Toro to his right as the third baseman. Now in the ship, Miles Straw making his first major league start at second base will be on the shortstop side. Alenis Diaz at first and Martin Maldonado behind the plate. Simmons takes a ball. Hamilton Simmons, one of the hottest angels coming in, hitting 346 in his last nine games. You see that he has nine of his 37 RBIs on the year against the Astros. There's a strike called by David Rackley, the home plate umpire tonight. One thing we know about Wade, good or bad, he is going to work quickly. By far the fastest worker this season in the major leagues. No one's even close. He's got almost a two-second lead in between pitches. For the next fastest pitcher. That ball hit into right center field, and that'll be down for a hit. And Simmons with a single into right with one out in the inning. That's what happens to Wade Miley. It feels like the opposing team just takes what's given to them, not trying to do too much against Wade Miley. You saw it on a Wade on a mattress from Superman how Wade had the fastball away and Simmons just went with it. Now Albert Poole holds the batter. Should I state the obvious right now? Go ahead. Just broke up the no-hitter. <laughs> well played. <laughs> nice. It's nice to have the headset. <laughs> Wade made his last start against the Angels at Minute Maid Park. Went one inning plus two batters into the second inning before he was lifted. He would allow four runs in that start. The other thing, if we're stating the obvious, that would be nice to see is Wade get through a first inning unscathed. Isn't that the biggest thing for Wade? We've yeah. seen it over the course of the year. Even when he was going good, some of those first innings could be an issue, whether it be command or base hits. But he's a high ground ball guy, still could use one right here with a runner on first base. And I guarantee you, not to mention what it would mean for the ball club, but for Wade Miley alone, that would be a, a mild accomplishment considering what's been happening here in recent starts. It's been 16 earned runs in the first inning this month in his four starts. And that's why the ERA for the year is so inflated in that first. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. A 7.71 is that big ERA. And we have seen the Astros with their offense have the ability ability to fight back and score runs. But mentally, as a pitcher, Wade Miley knows that number is what it is, and he'd like to get out of there. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not like Wade hasn't had success this year for five months. He was one of the best pitchers in the American League. Now, if you don't make that trade for Zach Greinke right before the deadline, Wade's your guy that's going to start game three of the playoffs. And then all of a sudden in September, it's been exactly the opposite of what we saw the first five months. As he walks holes there after the hit by Simmons, so two on with one out here in the first. Get your tickets to the Houston Open and stay after the golf for an evening concert featuring Clay Walker. The concert begins at 7.15 or when the last putt is made. Proceeds benefit the Astros Foundation. To purchase your tickets, visit HoustonOpenGolf.com slash tickets. Those are the two guys that will make the final two starts of the season. Kind of weird to see Alex Bregman in there as the DH playing in the game but not in the field. Justin Verlander will start Saturday. Garrett Cole starts Sunday to finish off the season. Here's Cole Calhoun. Calhoun grounds one to first. Diaz looked at second, makes the play unassisted instead. 
Both runners move up, but that's the second out of the inning. You can kind of have the idea that Ledness was going to take the chance with Albert Pujols running at first base, maybe get him at second base on her matches from Supermo. But opting for the sure out, sometimes that's a good idea to get that second out. Not try and force the issue. Picks up a strike on the inside corner against Kevin Smith, the opposing catcher. Smith's been good against lefties this year, 22 for 66, batting 333. And now Wade ahead of the count, 0-2. If Wade can get through this first inning unscathed, it would be not just a monkey off his back. It would be more like a gorilla jumping off his back. He would feel the release of a lot of stress in what's happened here this month. So kind of a big batter early in this game for Wade Miley. And he might have the strikeout. He does. Foul tip. Kevin Smith said it hit the ground. Martin Maldonado's heading to the dugout. We might get a conference with the umpires. That ball hit the ground. They're going to check the baseball, and it did. So Wade that close to getting through the first. Instead, the count remains 0-2. Appreciate the effort by Martin Maldonado. It was a good changeup down and away. Kevin Smith check swings, but there is dirt that kicked up. Martin just working with the umpire and trying to play it off a little bit. So close. Hit in a walk in this inning, and now Miley trying to finish it off with Smith, who fouls one back and above our heads. That time he got him. No, come on. I'm so <laughs> hoping Wade gets a shutout first inning. I'm begging at this point. <laughs> mm, just enough. That was amazing. He's had a foul tip. Yep. Barely caught the dirt. And then he had a check swing. Just held up brief by that much. And he still needs that final strike. And that didn't miss by much. It's two and two. How does Kevin Smith not chase that one after chasing two in the dirt almost? That was a pretty good pitch. Mm. Pitcher's pitch, doesn't get the call. That's a foul ball. And we, in general, are Team Astros, but kind of openly root for a guy like Wade Miley who has gone through this kind of a month to just get through that first inning unscathed and exhale. To his credit, he's competing, throwing some tough pitches on the edges, forcing Kevin Smith to fight off some tough pitches. But yeah. Ball hit well to left field. Back goes Tucker, and this ball will be down into the wall. Smith will drive in two. And that's how things have gone for Wade Miley. So close to getting through the first, but gives up a couple of more. He's allowed runs in every inning in the first inning of his five starts this month. That's tough for Wade Miley, but he's got to focus in on this hitter coming up. As you see that cut fast, that's just straight fastball stayed up out over the plate for Seamer at the top of the zone. He wanted to get in on the hands of Kevin Smith and was unable to locate it in there far enough to tie up Smith. So now Miley will face the designated hitter, Taylor Ward. That is now 18 first inning runs 
allowed this month in five starts. Outside, one and one. Or the guy who started out as a catcher. Moved to third and then the outfield this year. Now DHing tonight. Oh, Wade's throwing a lot of pitches here in this inning. Two and one the count to Taylor Ward. Just trying to limit the damage. Interesting too. We've seen a little uptick in the velocity on the four seam fastball from Wade Miley, 92, 93. Maybe a little more emphasis on those pitches, trying to beat these hitters to get out of the first inning. Averaging 90 and a half miles an hour on his fastball this season. He got him. Ward goes down swinging. Wade gives up a couple and strands the runners. 2 0 Angels. Round Rock Express MVP led the team in home runs, RBIs, runs, and total bases. And he was the fifth overall pick in 2015 here with the Astros coming into this ballgame. A 304 average, a 910 OPS. And we're starting to see flashes of that power from Kyle Tucker. A big home run to center field in Seattle was that third home run. Now has 10 RBIs in this ballgame as he walks up to the plate. Tucker also led the Pacific Coast League in stolen bases, and he's five for five at the big league level in steals. So Tucker will lead things off, followed by a lead Miss Diaz and Josh Reddick. Tucker hitting a home run in Seattle to give the Astros a 3 0 lead in that final game against the Mariners on Wednesday. I mean, Berea had a 1 2 3 first inning and starts off Tucker with a breaking ball that he misses. It's 0 1. And the Astros were able to hit four home runs against Berea. They kind of sat on the slider a little bit. He is heavy on the slider, especially when he gets to two strike counts. Upstairs for a ball, it's one and two. Yeah, he could not get off that pitch and he kept flattening him out over the zone and it was getting ripped. There's a changeup. Yeah, changeup one two, and now he gets into the count where it starts to build with the slider. Two two counts. He'll throw it about 50% of the time, and in a three two count, he throws that slider over 80% of the time. No kidding. Yeah. Sit on it. He got the slider and couldn't hit it as he goes down swinging for the first out, first strikeout for Berea. Time now to take it. Peek at our Chevy Stroll poll. You can go to add ATT Sports and SW and vote on our Chevy Stroll poll. Alex Bregman wins the AL MVP if he, I know what Baggy thinks, gets to 300 as far as the batting average, gets to 600 for slugging percentage, passes Trout in war, which he is very close. We already showed you that. Or D, nothing. Just give it to him. <laughs> Here's a lead Ms. Diaz. Well, he certainly made it an interesting conversation and hitting that 40th home run didn't hurt. If he can get that average up to 300, that wouldn't hurt. Yeah, because then you start to bring in some of the old school voters who like the batting average, like the RBIs, like the home run. But that war number is actually the one that kind of snuck up on me. Because Mike Trout is a war monger. 
as far as the statistic is concerned. And that's what everybody seems to point to. But now Alex Bregman getting close enough to where you could say, yeah, that's MVP type war numbers. Trout's final game, September 7th, out for the rest of the year. That's a strike at the top of the zone. Diaz now with a 3 2 count. Ledmus getting the start at first base in place of his buddy Yuli Gurriel. Yuli should be back in there tomorrow. And that one's down. So, first walk issued by Berea, first base runner of the night for the Astros as Ledmus Diaz draws a walk. Berea did not walk any Astros in his last start, but allowed eight hits in those four home runs. Here's Josh Reddick. Reddick playing center field tonight. Josh started out there a few times this year. That is the fifth game he has started in center field. Showed you the best records in baseball before this game started. The Astros sitting at 104 wins coming in, a new franchise record. The Yankees can max out at 105 wins if they sweep their weekend series in Arlington against the Rangers. But if the Astros get to 105 and the Yankees get to 105, the Astros win the tiebreaker. So the magic number for the number one seed is down to one. Dodgers won today. They're up to 103 wins. They can max out at 106. So that magic number is sitting at two. Dodgers will play in San Francisco over the weekend. Any combination of Dodgers losses and Astros wins adding to two will give the Astros the home field advantage. Through the World Series. So that's the team goals and obviously whatever else they can tack on to their franchise record and wins over the next four days. And those guys have some individual. Hardware to think about for their final starts. Foul tip caught by Kevin Smith and Reddick goes down swinging for the second out. Julia. Well, I've got our league leaders presented by Houston Methodist. You were talking about some of the scenarios, what the Astros are going for here. Highest win percentage, though, against division opponents. So this is something the Astros have been talking about for years now, and it's been a big part of their culture. Go out, win the games against your division, because at the end of it, you will end up winning that division, getting yourself into the postseason where good things will happen. Well, having the best record or best winning percentage in your division, best record against your division will also get you the tiebreaker or the one up if you are tied with the National League team at the end of the season, which you were just discussing with the Dodgers. If they should end up with the same amount of wins at the end, the Astros would come out ahead. Abraham Toro slices one to left. Hermosillo, good hustle and slides into the wall. He's okay. Nice play to end the second inning. A walk and one man left on base. TNT Sportsnet on social media from in-game highlights to exclusive player interviews. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest on the Astros all season long. Astros Orange in the house here at Angels Stadium. First of four between the Astros and the Angels. Brian Goodwin leads things off for Los Angeles here in the second inning. It'll be Goodwin, Caleb Coward, and Michael Hermosillo. Bottom third of the order. Angels put up two in the first inning. Wade was tantalizingly close to finishing off that inning. And allowed a two out, two run double to Kevin Smith. And now he goes to work here in the second inning. So what Julia was explaining in the end of the top half of the first inning with the Astros and the Dodgers. 
they do end up with the same record since they didn't play each other head to head this year. Second tiebreaker is record within your division. That's why the Astros would win that tiebreaker. I'm not sure I love that idea. I, mean, I find it interesting that they pick the division you're playing in to decide it because the opponent doesn't have any opportunity to make up those games. Ball hit hard into right field. Brantley will track it down on a hop. Goodwin's thinking about two. Brantley's throw will be not quite in time. Good with a head first slide and an opening double here in the second inning. Wade falling behind, getting to a hitter's count. Forcing him to throw a pretty good pitch to Goodwin to hit. Brian Goodwin put a good swing on it. Fastball pretty much right down the middle, and Goodwin drops the head on it. Pulls it and forcing Michael Brantley to his left. Had to stop on a dime, make a good throw in, but the speed of Goodwin gets him into second base. Looks like he may have run into the shortstop. Maybe stepped on a hand, I'm not sure. I would have liked to have seen Jack Mayfield closer to the baseball when it comes in. I know the top is a little bit tough, but if it's going to be a close play, you need to be closer to the ball. Because the further you let that ball travel, there's more time for that runner to get in there just fundamentally. Goodwin jarred himself going into the bag. Looked like he was grabbing his lower back. Yep. Yeah, just I think his back is what he's. It's kind of a reverse scorpion. There you go. <laughs> so see if he stays in the game as they check him out at second base. But yeah, I mean, even though it's working out for the Astros this year with a tiebreaker, you would think there are going to be some seasons where a team just dominates within their division. Mm -hmm. I completely agree, like the Astros are right now. And I don't think the division is that bad this year. There's going to be years where teams in a much tougher division, if you're in a much tougher division, you play 72 times within your division and end up with the same record as a team in an easy division. And again, I'm not saying that about 2019, just in general. It seems like it's better if you have a better record outside of the division with two teams in different leagues but yeah like it would open it up to a little more fairness yeah so to speak I don't think Goodwin's going to hang in there but I think that's it that's not good no late in the year Goodwin's already set his career marks in all the offensive categories he wanted to play as many games down the stretch as possible but he's going to leave this game As that back, as you see him reaching there with the left hand, that back not feeling so good. So, leadoff double for Goodwin, and he'll be lifted for a pinch runner. Kian Wong, who was just acquired from Tampa Bay, will see his first action with the Angels. He will pinch run at second base. Caleb Coward. Coward four for 12 on the air. He was called up late by the Angels when Luis Ranjifo went on the injured list. Coward's kind of been an experimental year after playing with the Angels the last four seasons. Wanted to see if he could become a two way player this year play the field and also pitch at the minor league level takes a strike here it's one and one be interesting to see if that trend continues where they not necessarily encourage two way players but maybe offer them the opportunity to maybe be that guy will be a productive at bat for coward as he sends one to first base pinch runner Wong moves over to third with one out Jared Walsh is another one of those guys who played some first base here with the Angels down the stretch. Here's Michael Hermosillo. He'll bat with a runner on third and one out, and the Angels leading two to nothing. Hermosillo has spent the majority of the season at AAA, 172 at the big league level with a couple of RBIs. 
takes one down and in. Beautiful night here in Anaheim. Very little wind blowing on this Thursday evening. Three night games followed by an afternoon contest on Sunday. Plummer mentioned it in the pregame warm-up show that we have all the games starting at the same time as be has become tradition in the major leagues on that final day of the season. So we'll see what's still in play. We could have a National League Central race to decide. We could have that American League wild card picture still in flux, although Cleveland losing tonight in Chicago is really going to hurt their chances. There's a strike called. And of course here for the Astros they'll have Garrett Cole trying to put his final number up for other pitchers to chase in the future for most strikeouts in Astros history. Now Hermosillo with a 2 2 count. Right now it's at 316. Other than Nolan Ryan, he's the pitcher with the most strikeouts in a single season in the American League in the designated hitter era. Into center field on a line. Reddick backs up a few steps and makes the catch. Hermosillo able to drive in his third one of the season, and the Angels now lead three to nothing. Good fundamental baseball here at the bottom part of the order for the Anaheim Angels. Pick up that run at third base, less than two. Wade will face the top of the order. David Fletcher. Fletcher grounded a short his first time up. First pitch take by Fletcher, nothing new. He is not only the leader in fewest first pitch swings, he dominates that category. Kind of like Wade dominates the quickest pitcher. Fletcher not even close to the second most selective hitter. He goes around here on a 1 1 pitch. Fletcher swings at 8%, 8.2% of first pitches he sees. Next close is Xander Bogarts at 14%. It's a pretty wide margin. Rounds one right side. Wade's going to have to cover. Tough play for Diaz and Fletcher safe. Throw was behind Wade a little as David Fletcher always seems to be on base against the Astros. And I wonder if Oledmus Diaz may be ranging a little bit too far to his right because it looks like Miles Straw, who's playing second base this evening in your picture, had an opportunity to make an easy play on that. With the Ledness taking off to his right and expanding his range, makes it a very tough throw coming back to Wade Miley. That's where in an infield where you know you're shifting a lot and having played multiple positions, you've really got to do a good job of communicating where you're at and turning around and actually seeing where the guy is playing. Because that ball not hit very hard, knowing that Miles Straw is a pretty fast guy, let him go over there and cover that space and maybe get that out. And get out of this inning for Wade Miley. Even though Ledmus has played 17 games at first base this year, still not a position he's very familiar with. More of a second baseman, shortstop, played a little more in the outfield. So Wade with two outs will face Angleton Simmons. You know, it's. The numbers are what they are. Wade has not been good in September, but it's been one of those stretches, too, where it's kind of like Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong against Wade has gone wrong against him. Yeah, it has been a massive uphill battle for Wade Miley. The inconsistency with the pitches and giving up a lot of singles. Some tough luck like we just saw in that last play turning into a base hit for David Fletcher. But at the same time, at this level, you've got to find a way. Because for one or two starts, you kind of say, okay, I'm snake bit. If things aren't going my way, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to make the adjustment and get a little bit deeper in these games. But we haven't seen that turn of the corner yet for Wade Miley. The runner was picked off, but a throw in the dirt allows Fletcher to get to second base.
That'll be a stolen base for Fletcher, his ninth of the year. Up, oh, take the steal away. They're going to say a balk was called. Either way, it's going to result in a runner at second. Must have been the first base or third base umpire. I didn't see either the second base till Larry Vanner was pointed right there that it was a balk. I think it might have been Ben May at first who called it, but he called it after the runner was already at second. It's like, huh, yeah, probably let that one go. They already accomplished what they were trying to do. Yeah, unless you're going to the umpire arbitration table and you say, hey, man, I got a couple of box under my belt. There Pay is, up. There is such a thing. Can ask Bob Davidson. Oh, <laughs> he's a rich man then. <laughs> Three and one the count. Indeed. Astros after dark. Three more tonight, tomorrow, Saturday. Our final three of the year. And Wade walks Anderson Simmons. But, yeah, there was a base hit with two outs. But if that throws on the money, or like you said, if a lead miss lets Miles Straw make the play, then Wade's already been in the dugout here for the last few minutes instead. Saves him pitches, saves him a visit. Hispanic Heritage Month is presented by BSB Brown Sugar Bourbon. 19 years for Albert Pujols, and it will be a Hall of Fame career. I know this might be a little bit painful for Astro fans at home to watch, but he has done a lot of damage against the Houston Astros. But B, truth be told, he's done a lot of damage throughout the league and career 300 hitter, 2,075 RBIs. I believe one of only three guys to do it. Above that 2,000 RBI threshold, 661 doubles to go with the 656 hits, 10-time All-Star, a couple of gold gloves, a couple of championships, and three MVPs for Albert Pujols. And the numbers as the standard bearer for the most home runs and most RBIs in a career against the Astros, 59 and 165 for Pujols. And he gets a ground ball to third. Stepping on the bag will be Toro. And Wade gets out of any further damage. Good visit by Stromy. But our run scores is 3 0. Air Jordan, 679 slugging percentage. Best ever by a rookie. You've got to go all the way back to 1937 to find a guy named Rudy York, who was at 651. And then Jordan put the jetpack on and flew right past him to get that slugging percentage up to 679. Do it in a big way. Not too many cheapies off the bat of that man. Night off for Jordan as he hangs out with Jose Altuve and Aledmus Diaz tonight. Originally, A.J. was thinking of having Jordan play in the outfield tonight, but decided on Kyle Tucker with Tucker hitting that home run last night. He is close to an 1100 OPS, which is not only the best by any rookie, but it's the best by a wide margin. He has taken all the drama out of the rookie of the year in the American League in 2019. Yeah, we don't have to dig too deep on numbers on him. So for the Astros quest to become the first team ever to have rookie of the year Cy Young winner and MVP two thirds of that equation are a slam dunk. Yep. Just a matter of whether Bregman can catch Mike Trout here over the final four games in the voters minds. Jason Stark has these votes. Tentatively you're not allowed to vote to out the season or at least you shouldn't. Projected, yeah. yeah, projected. Yeah, Jordan is unanimous, I believe. The Cy Young's going to be interesting to see where the votes go and how they are split between Garrett Cole and Justin Verlander. But Alex Bregman, something tells me over these next couple of games, he's going to do something special that will make everybody kind of take a second look at the numbers of Mike Trout. I just wish more people talked about the fact that he has moved from third to short, short to third, back to short with Carlos Correa's issues. We can talk about it because... I just hope it catches on because that needs to be talked about a little bit for me because that's the value, again, of Alex Bregman where the number, the offensive numbers are as good as they are. 
yet he's moved and played a great defense at both. Yeah, and he makes it look seamless. And yeah. you, you're a guy that moved around a lot. It's not as easy as he makes it look. No, it really isn't. He's, he's created very good footwork at both third base and shortstop, and they are different positions in how you approach the baseball before it's hit. And that's a primary position at shortstop up the middle. You're getting a lot of action. You know, Carlos Correa is going to end the season with 75 games played. And here the Astros are already with a franchise best 104 wins and trying to lock up the number one seed for the entire postseason. Thanks in large part to Bregman moving into that shortstop spot. Here's Jack Mayfield. Jack getting the start tonight. You see his numbers on the year. Home run and five doubles on the season. He only has one single. Six of his seven hits have been extra base hits. Guy we like to call Super Jack from his spring training exploits. Down on the count here to Barrio, one and two. Jaime Barrios looked good early. Barrio has kind of the opposite numbers of Wade Miley in that he has been better at home and his struggles have come on the road. And he's back on the slider train, 13 sliders, 13 fastballs, so it goes to that 50 50 split between those two pitches. But I agree with you, a 2.570 NRA at home, it's pretty good. Here's that 2 2 count where he loves the slider. Jack Mayfield gets into one to center field. Hermosillo, the new center fielder, puts it away on the running track. Mayfield hit it well, but to the deepest part of the ballpark for the second out. 2020 Astros season tickets on sale now. Enjoy some of the best seats and exclusive benefits throughout the year and buy your tickets today to secure postseason tickets for October. For tickets and more information, visit astros.com slash season tickets or call 1-877-9-ASTROS today. You know, the Astros next two games at Minute Maid Park will be next Friday and Saturday, a week from tomorrow and a week from Saturday. First two games of the ALDS. Still to be determined is whether the Astros will be the one or this or the two seed. If they're the one seed, they'll get the wild card winner. If they're the two seed, they will get the Minnesota Twins who wrapped things up yesterday in the AL Central. But with the Yankees being the other American League team playing on Friday and Saturday, expect the Astros to have afternoon contests at Minute Maid Park for those games. Straw fouls went away. Miles popped up his first time up. Astros have just one base runner tonight, a 3 2 pitch that missed for a walk to Aledmus Diaz. He has pitched well here in his first three innings. This is the top of the zone. And the count goes full on Miles. Straw learning to play the infield in 2019. We've seen him at shortstop a few times and tonight making his first start at second base. Ground ball right side with Pujols going for it. Straw has a chance and forget it, Berea. Miles Straw wins that race all day, every day. It's another play where maybe the first baseman was better served not going after that baseball. Yeah, just let the second baseman come across. It was almost a check swing from Miles Straw, but realizing where he put it, it was like a glorified push bunt that he ran into a base hit. Yeah, Albert Pujols expanding his range a little bit, and it's a tough feed back to the pitcher who's racing the base runner down that first base line. There was some closing speed, too. It looked like they were going to be bang, bang, and then Straw made it not even a close play. Here's Michael Brantley. Community Bank of Texas brings you some high-level contact. How about the lowest swing percentage rate in baseball? David Fletcher on top.
A couple of Astros on that top five list across baseball. Michael Brantley at 4.8. Alex Bregman at five just behind. Brantley's done a very good job in the two-strike counts this season. These guys don't swing and miss. It's tough to do this day and age with everybody it feels mm -hmm. like throwing 95 plus miles an hour with cut sink slide split curve. Yeah, we're seeing strikeouts and home runs at a record setting pace. Yeah these guys are not the norm. Wouldn't say it's a big series for Brantley but it would be nice for his mindset if he could have a good series going into the postseason because September has been a little bit of a struggle for him. It has and you always want to go into those postseasons with a little bit of a good feel. It's like the end of spring training. You want to have that swing slotted the timing right the foot down. You feel comfortable ready to fire on some good pitches. And you want to see the ball find some open space and it really helps the attitude and the confidence. Ian Wong the new second baseman makes the play and Brantley retired for the final out. It's three nothing Angels. By Blue Cross Blue Shield. Nolan Ryan struck out 11 in his fifth career no hitter against the Los Angeles Dodgers on September 26 of 1981. That would establish himself as the all time leader in no hit ball games at five. We all know that he would go on and get a couple more and increase that to seven. Number retired here in Anaheim, here in, in, in Houston, and also in Arlington. I believe he's the only player to have his number retired in three organizations. A phenomenal career for Nolan Ryan. The Express mentioned the Cole number with Nolan Ryan being the only one with more strikeouts in the DH era in the American League in one season. Ryan has the top four totals, and then Garrett Cole has the fifth highest total now. Cole Calhoun will lead things off against Wade Miley. Angels have scored three runs so far, two in the first, one in the second. It'll be Calhoun and Kevin Smith and Taylor Ward. Time now to show you the shift presented by Geico. A little bit different look for the Astros as far as names, but the same shift that we've been seeing on some of these left-handed hitters and most notably against Cole Calhoun in this American League West. Miley has thrown 55 pitches so far, 32 for strikes. That ERA coming into the month was at 305. That was good for third in the American League behind his teammates, Justin Verlander and Garrett Cole. Now Cole leads Verlander by one point. But Miley was third coming into the month, and now it's at 403. Almost one full run higher in his five starts in September. And I've seen a lot of first inning runs. Oh, 94 heater. He's throwing a little more four seam fastballs lately. Yeah, we've seen him reach back early on in this game. You're right. It's a guy kind of searching right now for the answer. Yeah, he's trying to create something with that fastball. Miley, who's normally extremely fast once he gets the sign he goes but he and Martin not getting together on the sign there so Calhoun stepped out now count goes to three and two Wade walked one in the first one in the second finally facing the Angels for the fifth time this year Ball hit hard. Miles Straw, nice play in the shift. Puts away Calhoun for the first out. The straw tested for the first time at second base. And there's one away in the third.
Here's Kevin Smith. I think AJ has probably as many decisions or more decisions in the final series of this year going into the postseason than he did in 2017 and 18. And part of it has to do with that number four spot in the rotation because there's kind of a trickle down effect depending on who gets that. Yeah, and it's interesting. You know, you get down to that four spot and who is it? And it really only comes down to two guys, I believe, for me, are Keedy and Wade Miley. And it's almost by a process of elimination because those are the two guys that have actually been stretched out mm -hmm. that could give you five innings if they were good enough on a given night. And if you only take one, who backs up Miley or Keedy if they struggle and they come out in the third inning? And yeah. then A.J.'s trying to cover more outs than he anticipated. That's the hard part. That's what he's dealing with. That's the dilemma is, you know, it's a no-brainer going into this month. Miley's your four guy, and you, you roll him out there. But with all the question marks surrounding him now, you're not sure if he's going to be in that rotation. And if not, can he serve as a guy in the bullpen? And that's a huge decision for A.J. with a pitcher who was one of your guys all the way through the month of August, one of your guys you counted on big time. Yeah, if you, at the end of August, if you would have made out that playoff roster, you would have had, would have been an easy one, two, three, four in your rotation because Wade Miley would have been that guy. But the month of September has definitely changed the opinion. And then the the brief flashes of brilliance we've seen from Urquidy have been highly appealing. Is he the guy? Especially when you consider what he's done against the Oakland A's. Yep. He had a great outing against them, baffling them with the fastball and the changeup. And there's also a trickle-down effect not only – with that number four starter situation, but it also can impact the position player. As Smith, who doubled his first time up, loops one into center, and Josh Reddick comes on and makes a play for the second out. Because if you do need that extra protection after your four starter in the ALDS or ALCS for that matter, and you might look at an extra arm, but the ALDS in the past, they had used seven relievers. You might go to an eight-man bullpen for the ALDS with that uncertainty about the length yep. he might get in that four start. To try and protect some of those outs that A.J.'s going to have to go out and get if you see a shorter outing from one of those two guys. So then that could impact a guy like Miles Straw or Kyle Tucker for that last bench spot. So a lot of moving parts. And A.J. and his coaching staff and the front office staff led by Jeff Luno will all make those decisions after this series is over before – Friday's first game of the ALDS, but there's going to be some tough calls for sure. Here's Taylor Ward. Behind of the count, one and two. One of the cool things here at Angel Stadium is they show the updated ERA. Hits per nine, strikeouts per nine, walks per nine. They update the season numbers after every batter. So we'll be able to follow along on Sunday as Garrett Cole tries to set the new Major League mark for strikeouts per nine. Right now, he would own that record. And we'll also be able to follow along with the ERA race for Justin Verlander and Garrett Cole. The final starts. Three and two the count. That ball hit off the mound in a diving attempt by Jack Mayfield, but ball into left field for a base hit. Award of out, two out base runner. And Kian Wong will get his first at bat as a member of the Los Angeles Angels. Wong was just claimed off waivers from Tampa Bay on Tuesday after being designated for assignment by Tampa Bay on the 22nd. Pitch outside for a ball. It's 1-0. There are those numbers I was speaking of. Wade Miley with his updated ERA hits per nine, strikeouts per nine, walks per nine. 
Seventy two pitches in. Wong takes a strike. It's one and one. Kian Wong is the younger brother of the Cardinals second baseman Colton Wong. Drafted and spent his entire career with Tampa Bay in the minor leagues prior to this season when he made his major league debut. On the 5th of September. Batting in Brian Goodwin's spot, who left the game after a double. Looked like he had tightness in his lower back as he walked off the field. Long came in as a pinch runner. Pena stylish even on his days off. Pretty good promotional work by him because I believe those are being sold in the team store. Is that right? Yeah. One of those cool headbands that cool you off on a hot day. Nice. Or you can just look cool. He always looks cool. Protect the payload. I don't think I've, I've seen those before. That's cool that they're selling them. That's how you tame the pineapple top. <laughs> The hat looks like it's sitting on top of a pineapple. <laughs> it's just resting up there. <laughs> two and two the count, and Wade misses down and away. The count goes full. Well, Wade's at 78 pitches here in the third inning. So it is not going to be a night where he can go very deep in this game. On the ground, straws there. And that'll do it for the Angels in the third. One hit, one left on. It's a 3 0 game after three. Going to fall on a couple of very good hitters in this Astros lineup, and they've been doing magnificent things throughout the course of the season, but they've been doing market, markedly good against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. They have combined for 15 home runs, which is second most versus an opponent in franchise history. That is George Springer and Alex Bregman. Kind of makes sense considering one has 38 home runs, the other one has 40, and they've been doing it within the American League West, taking it out on Angels pitching. Here is Bregman leading off. Astros haven't solved Jaime Berria very well today. Just an infield hit by Miles Straw as they bat in the fourth inning. Bregman grounded out into the shift his first time up. Played made by the second baseman at the time, who was David Fletcher. Fletcher's now in left field, and Kean Wong's the second baseman. 2 0 the count. It'll be Bregman, Kyle Tucker, and Aledmus Diaz. Astros down three. And he hits it hard, does Alex, but at the shortstop, Angleton Simmons. Well, Bregman's hitting some hard outs, two of his last three at bats, the final at bat last night, and then that one. I'll bring up Kyle Tucker. Our Honda scouting report brought to you by your greater Houston Honda dealers. Shows you that hot cold zone this season for Kyle Tucker likes to get those arms extended. But I really feel he hasn't been challenged too often on the inside corner because he's been facing a lot of left handed pitching that stays away from him. But he's done a good job of covering that middle away portion of the zone. And that unique swing with that straight right arm. Allows oh, him to get out there and crush that ball is hit well to right field and that ball is gone. Kyle Tucker. His fourth home run of the year. And the Astros on the board. It's now a three to one game. Tucker a home run in back to back nights. Threw it in one of those hot zones and Kyle Tucker got the arms extended. Not sure what that is that George has got going on. They did that the first time with Tucker. There it is. 
Tough angle on that one. Foul ball into the booth. Yep. That one came right in. I think it landed on my paper. Did it really? If it could have only landed on our spy cam. <laughs> yeah, that one we couldn't see until the ball was almost on us. Yeah, that awning, I knew it was coming this way. I thought it was going to hit on top, but we got it. Diaz with a grounder to third. Letting this retire for the second out. So another look at our hot cold zones on our scouting report brought to you by Greater Houston Honda Dealers at middle away and on our MD Anderson strike zone. You're going to see where that change up ends up an off speed pitch down and away. Kyle Turker goes out and gets around it and yanks it into the right field bleachers. Tucker now with four home runs on the season in 58 at bats. And has hit a home run on back to back nights. Last year in 64 at bats, Tucker did not have any home runs. Here's Josh Reddick. Reddick trying to snap an 0 for 12. He struck out his first time up. Josh, another guy like Michael Brantley, who would like to have a good series going into the postseason. It's been a little bit of an up and down second half. Got hot there for a while. And that ball's hit well in the right field for a base hit. Josh Reddick, a two out base runner. And the Astros have their third hit of the game, a couple of hits in this inning. Some of that off speed. These, I mean, these Astro hitters are getting out and around and finding some empty spaces out there against the Angels. Here's Abraham Toro. Toro flied out his first time up. Abraham's been better as a left-hand hitter at the big league level. Has both home runs and all nine of his runs batted in, hitting lefty. Sends one to left, slicing into the crowd. Toro was the starting third baseman last night. It was his 19th start of the year for the Astros. And he was almost the starting third baseman for the second time in his major league career with a no hitter. He single handedly helped Justin Verlander pick up his no hitter in Toronto with a two run, two out home run against the Blue Jays in the top half of the ninth inning. Last night he was watching as Zach Greinke came within two outs of the Astros third no hitter of the season would have been the first team in the history of the major leagues to have three no hitters. Just more history the Astros are trying to accomplish it's been unreal. It's almost routine. It sounds scary, but it, the way it's been going this season, it is almost routine. Oh, here we go again. Yeah, another record. Yeah, another record. Another incredible outing. A.J. Hinch is trying to set a record this year that would be an unbreakable record. He could go the entire year without an intentional walk. That is a great call. We kind of overlooked that one. I mean, they talk about Maggio's hitting streak or Cy Young wins. Well, that one's probably unbreakable. But, <laughs> but yeah. that one we know definitively. Zero can't be beat. And that's where AJ stands 158 games in as Toro goes down swinging for the final out. But it was a big swing from the young Tuck getting around that changeup and launching it into the night here in Anaheim. Beaches. On we go to the Bottom half of the fourth inning. Yellow Cowart leads things off. Cowart grounded out his first time up. Wade Miley back out there with 80 pitches. Has had a lot of pitches thrown in the first three innings. 
So AJ is going to start the inning with his bullpen going. Pitch misses down low. It's 2 0. AJ wanted to get some work in too for some guys. He wanted to see Brad Peacock pitch a couple of games in this series, and there is Brad warming up now. Want to see Ryan Presley pitch a couple of games. Those guys just coming off the injured list. Jack Mayfield makes the play on Coward for the first out of the fourth inning. He looked good in that first game back off the injured list. He did. It was kind of exciting. I know he was pretty ramped up because he had taken so long to try and figure out what the issue was in that shoulder, that neck area. But fortunately, he's figured it out. And last time out, we saw pretty good movement on that slider, but I was really impressed with the fluidity of the delivery and the way the fastball was jumping out at around 94 miles an hour. That was a very positive sign from Brad Peacock. Here is Michael Hermosillo. Hit a sack fly when he lined out to center field his first time up. And tries to hold up. He goes around. One and one to count. Wade's retired five of the last six batters. Talking this whole start for Wade about his ability to make the postseason roster and be that number four starter in the playoffs. It's hard to imagine. We and you could not even think that that would be a conversation at any point of the season for the first 130 games of this Astros schedule. Yeah, we were anticipating just a luxury of having a legitimate four guys in that rotation. Unfortunately, Aaron Sanchez also went on the shelf with the shoulder injury, but it would have been a potential to have a solid five guys and maybe move a Sanchez or a Miley into that bullpen type situation. But things changed pretty quick here in the month of September. Hermosillo goes down swinging. Wade Miley picks up a strikeout. And that's the second out of the inning and the second strikeout for Wade. I saw Aaron Sanchez here before the game, and I believe Julia was there when he met with the media. Yes, it was really good to see Aaron Sanchez because it's been a while. He actually had surgery back on the 10th, so earlier this month, but it was to repair a capsule. They didn't really know much until they got into that right shoulder to see exactly just how bad things were, but he knew he wasn't right. There was a decision that he had to make when it came time, whether he was going to try to pitch through some pain, some things that didn't feel right, or just have the surgery. A big decision, though, is that's going to put him out, obviously, for the rest of this year, the offseason, and then through next year. Not real sure of the timeline just yet, but it will impact the beginning of 2020. But it is good to have him here. He has hated not being around for something that's been so special he's been watching, but he will finish out the regular season. He'll fly home with the team, going back to Houston and be around for the postseason. Well, there you go. Good for him. Yeah, he's got to be around and enjoy the time here. It's not his fault that the shoulder went out on him and he had to have surgery on it. So it's good that he is around these guys and enjoy it. I know he wants to be a part of things. And at least if he can enjoy the postseason and maybe pick up a few celebrations along the way, it'll help part of the recovery. Yeah, that will that will make the shoulder feel better. By the way, you may have noticed whenever Julia does her reports here. Wow. When the Angels are batting, it's Club Angel. Man. When they were coming to the plate. Yeah. She is right down by the speakers there. I think every speaker that plays the walk up music is in her spot. <laughs> I think they did that on purpose, too. They knew you were coming to me, and then someone hit play <laughs> as I started to tell you guys about what was going on. Happens there. every Just, time. I think they did that on purpose. Mm hmm. Something going on here. It's kind of good background music, Bill. David Fletcher towards short, and what a play by Super Jack Mayfield. Mayfield goes airborne to help Wade Miley with his first one, two, three inning of the night. Wade getting a little help from his friends. Not the regular defense out there, but we've seen Super Jack make some pretty amazing plays, and he made a big one right here for Wade Miley because it did give him that one, two, three inning. 
and by BSB. Brown Sugar Bourbon. You can't spell baseball without BSB. Fifth inning baseball. Astros down 3-1. to one. It'll be Martin Maldonado leading things off, followed by the guy who made that great defensive play, Jack Mayfield. And then the top of the order, Miles Straw. Jaime Berea gave up a couple of hits in a run last inning on that home run by Kyle Tucker. Martin struck out his first time up. Maldonado, longtime Los Angeles Angel. Last year when he came over from the Angels at the deadline, he was traded for a guy who will pitch against the Astros for the second time in a week. Patrick Sandoval will see him tomorrow. They'll be all lefties the rest of the way for the Angels in this four game series after Berea gets the start tonight. Berea has been good because he's been ahead of the count for the most part, but he starts this inning with a 3 0 count with Martin. And that one's inside. Four pitch walk to the number eight hitter, Martin Maldonado. Well, here we go. Leadoff man is on. See if the Astros can grind out some ABs, scrap together some hits, push some runners across the bases, and score a couple of runs. Because a lot of the thunder that the Astros normally have in their lineup have got really good seats to this ball game. <laughs> <laughs> There's one. I wonder if George would be interested in hanging out where Julie is at Club Angel. Oh, yeah. All right, George is usually the music guy. Well, he originated Club Astro. Yeah. Is that what Julia's calling it, or have I just made that up in my head? Are we calling it Club Angel? Could be. Okay. You definitely made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. It does feel like a club. Not Astros. That's good memories. Mm. Yeah, that was a good time. Things started to change. A lot of winds. Then there was a fog machine, <laughs> a strobe light. Those traveled too, didn't they? Yes, extra speakers that Carlos Beltran spent a lot of money on. Oh, wow. That's good veteran leadership right there. Yeah. Shirts were made. That thing took off. But yes, George is the DJ of the clubhouse. And so we should note that when he has a walk off interview with me, I am usually holding him back. He has to find someone he's quickly scrambling to try to tell someone exactly what playlist <laughs> hit play on before <laughs> before they can start celebrating pitch in the dirt Maldonado will advance it's now three and one so oh. Julia they don't have a go-to song there's a playlist there but I think play okay. George has all the access gotcha. but no I have heard the same songs <laughs> okay 104 times this year were a lot of them the ones we heard in the celebration yeah, probably. I can't remember. <laughs> I had a lot of champagne in my ears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not sure. Three and one the count to Jack Mayfield who ended the bottom half of the fourth inning with an outstanding defensive play. Jack Mayfield hits one to left field pretty well going back on it. Fletcher looking up and gone. Jack Mayfield a two run home run to left into the bullpen. His second major league home run has tied the game at three. Not an easy place to leave, and Super Jack got into that one and supercharged it out of here. Made a great play to finish off that bottom of the inning, giving Wade Miley a solid one, two, three inning for the first time in a very long time, and then he steps up and gets a big home run to tie this ball game up. 388 feet. Well struck by Super Jack to tie the game. Now Miles Straw fouls one away. New ball game thanks to Mayfield's second home run of the season. <laughs> Straw beat out an infield hit his first time up when he raced to the bag ahead of the pitcher Jaime Berea. Deckcast AI powered by AWS is going to give you some of the numbers on that. 
Miles Straw base hit earlier, motoring down the first baseline at 30.8 feet per second. Just a mile, 3.7 feet per second faster than the average major leaguer. Great closing speed. He really looked like he was about even with Perea till the final few feet and then just put on that burst. Mayfield hit 26 bombs this year for a triple-A round rock. Got into that one and has a smile on his face. What a year for Jack Mayfield. I mean, here's a guy, as Straw sends one into shallow right, that Calhoun will catch up to. Here's a guy in Jack Mayfield who wasn't even drafted out of college. Taking advantage of the opportunity. How about Jack? Big leg kick, hanging fastball, and he tears into it with a little bit of a bat flip at the end of it. He knew it was gone. Just drink it in as this ball soars into the night here at Anaheim. Jaime Berea is going to have the training staff come out to check on him here. He was sailing along through three innings, gave up a solo home run to Kyle Tucker last inning, and now a two-run home run. And apparently something bothering him on the mound. But Jack was undrafted out of Oklahoma, everyday shortstop, and has had, as an undrafted free agent, to, had to earn every step of the way in his minor league career and he was always an organizational guy but you never knew if he would get a chance to play at the big league level and this year he's had his opportunity. Yeah Super Jack when you're not drafted you are not a protected breed. Congrats to him on breaking through this year and tying this game up. Berea is going to leave the game. The new Angels pitcher will have as much time as he needs to warm up as Berea leaves here with one out in the fifth inning. Change being made at three after Super Jack tied things up with a two run home run. Alex Bregman takes on Mike Trout today by AARP. This is a hot topic, especially when you put these two teams together, but the MVP race is on. And since the All Star break, you can break these guys' numbers down any way you like, but we're going to do it right now since the break. Look at Alex Bregman and the surge he's been on back half of the season. Postseason push, September a huge month, obviously, for him. And those numbers right there. It's a lot of fun to compare those two, especially with what Mike, Tr Mike Trout said about his season. He said this is the best season that he's put together. And remember, it ended early with the surgery on his foot. But he is following what Bregman's doing right now. He said, I'm a huge baseball nerd. And Bregman's a great dude. These two are friends. They play each other in fantasy football in the same league, and they just went head-to-head. -head. Bregman beating Trout here recently. But those two, a lot of respect. Two great players in the game. TK. Yeah, and the fact that Bregman has Mike Trout talking about the possibility that he's not going to win the MVP, I mean, everybody pretty much had handed it to Trout for the first five months of the season. Yeah, and Alex Bregman got off to one of those perennial slow starts that he has. It wasn't an awful first half. You know, in 88 games, he had 23 home runs, but the batting average at 265, the RBI production probably wasn't where he want where he wanted it to be. So it's a credit to Alex Bregman coming out of that All-Star break, and he kind of said something interesting after that All-Star break when he was in the home run concert uh, contest. He said that he actually enjoys being in that contest because he feels like it actually gets his swing locked in. And who can argue when you see some of these second-half numbers that Julia just put up? And here are the overall numbers in 153 games for Alex Bregman, who is approaching 20 more games played than Mike Trout. He's got a six RBI lead on Trout. He's got nine more runs scored. Catching them in home runs probably won't get there, but the margin only five now. And also passed him in walks to take the AL lead in that category as well. And he beat him in fantasy football. If there needs to be a tiebreaker. There you go. You've got to go to the peripherals, TK. Yep. Bregman had a big day out of Jameis Winston and Mike Evans to beat Mike Trout last week. Evans caught three touchdown passes from Jameis. Taylor Cole getting as much time as he needs to warm up. Sometimes it takes people a little longer to warm up than most. 
He's got one inning under his belt as you see his numbers pop up. 35 games this season for Taylor Cole. He has thrown in 49 innings. That ERA is large at 6.24. I had a little bit to do with the whip being at 1.61 because of the 23 walks in 49 innings. As Michael Brantley walks up now that Taylor Cole is ready to go. He will throw the change up a lot, especially to left hand hitters. Throws the change up more than he does the fastball or the slider to lefties. As he'll face the lefty, Michael Brantley, to lead off this inning. Michael looking for his first hit, a couple of ground outs into the shift to the second baseman. As he takes this one for a strike. So Jaime Berea leaves three batters into the fifth inning. He will get a no decision tonight. And Berea was trying to snap a stretch where he didn't have a win since July 24. He is 0 and 7 with a couple of no decisions in that time. Brantley hit it hard, but for the third time tonight, he hits one at the second baseman. Ian Wong makes the play for the second out. Here is the aforementioned MVP candidate, Alex Bregman. Bregman has grounded out into the shift and also lined out to the shortstop, Simmons. Alex started the night at 298. He's currently at 297. Three doubles away from 40. One run scored away from 120. He already has a 40 home run, 110 RBI season going. Streak on the line tonight. He's reached in 34 consecutive road contests. He has a 2 0 count here facing Taylor Cole. See if he tries to jump on a fastball away right here. Got the fastball, but it was up. And now Bregman with a 3 0 count. No, just talking about the MVP talk again. Mike Trout on the season, 120 strikeouts if we're looking for more. Alex Bregman, 81 strikeouts coming into this game. Well, that's a number that can be overlooked. The fact that his walk to strikeout ratio is by far the best in baseball. Trout walks a lot, but he also strikes out a lot as opposed to Alex Bregman, who does a lot better job of pitches in the zone and not striking out. That is walk number 113 on the season for Bregman. He adds to that on base percentage, a two out base runner for the Astros. So that is now 35 consecutive road games for Breggy with reaching base at least once. 529 on base percentage during that streak. That's not too shabby. Here's Kyle Tucker, hit his fourth home run of the year his last time up. Outside for a ball. Tucker finished off his home run celebration with Miles Straw. We've seen the wobbly dance done, almost like a bowling pin that's kind of wobbling around. Yep. George Springer joined the celebration last time. Some more fun with numbers on that home run from. Kyle Tucker, 100.4 off the bat, 35-degree launch angle, majestic fly ball to right field, and there's something we can't put a stack cast number two. <laughs> the Stubbs is part of that celebration. Strong. That one's low for a ball, two and one. Tuck four home runs and 58 at bats after not hitting a home run in his first go round at the big league level last year. Takes a close pitch, but it's a strike. It's two and two. At the time when Tucker hit his home run, the Astros had just one base hit, and it was an infield hit by Miles Straw. 
That was the first blemish against Jaime Berea, who then left the game the next inning after allowing a two run home run to Mayfield. There you go, trying to clear out that inside with 92. See him setting up, up and in, trying to beat that swing, and that's where he's going to be tested, I believe. But the second he clears it out and can, can consistently clear it out, that's going to change the approach to Kyle Tucker. Gets the change up after he fouled off the fastball. Cole picks up a strikeout to end the fifth. Halfway home, tied it. Just in bases. Own rundown. <laughs> Resident by Chenier. The family friendly 5K and 10K run will take place this Saturday with proceeds benefiting the organizations. To register, visit Astros.com slash run. Club time. Take it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Feel it. <laughs> so aggressive. <laughs> I'm just letting it play out. New pitcher. Wait a minute. Brad P on the mound. I'm hyped. It's so funny. That is not her putting the microphone down to the speaker. Either. No, she's trying to run away from that thing, and you can feel it all the way up here. I love it. If there was somebody that needed a little hype intro, it's Brad Peacock. Yeah, who would have thought he would go with that kind of music? But <laughs> it's good to see him out there. Fresh off the injured list, he pitched against the Angels back in Minute Maid Park. Went a strong inning that we talked about. He did walk a batter through 13 pitches, but also had a strikeout. Big thing for him is that fastball velocity and location and the slider. He's quickly ahead 0-2 on Andrelton Simmons. Now it's good to see that velo back for Brad right away. He felt great about his outing. We're probably going to see him at least twice in this series. I imagine it might be back-to-back -back outings as A.J. wants to see Peacock and Presley tested coming back from the injured list. So Brad takes over in the fifth inning. In a new game, Wade Miley gets a no decision tonight as he goes four innings of five hit three-run baseball for Wade all the damage done in the first two innings he retired seven of the last eight batters he faced so even though Wade gave up three runs in four innings he left with a better taste in his mouth than it started Peacock misses outside it's one and two Wade walked to and struck out to while he was in there. We'll probably see him pop up on the bench during the course of this game. He's a starter who hangs around for the entire nine as Peacock misses outside as two and two. So it's up to the bullpens from here on out. Angels going to their bullpen due to injury. And Wade threw a lot of pitches in four innings. That's why he's out of the game. Ground ball towards third. Abraham Toro will make the play to get Simmons for the first out of the fifth. <laughs> this one doesn't have as much base, so it's not hitting as hard. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> how good we are we're even giving updates on the, the walk-up songs that's your whole night whole night we gotta get your earplugs our stage manager has some but that's just to drown us out yep that's true jack mayfield makes the backhand play and there's two away to the point where you didn't even notice we talked about it. oh here we go again Base. Oh, this is way better. <laughs> it's, it's just it's something. It's 
they do it in LA. Or, I think. I don't or, know. or in the vicinity of LA. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. The ones with the heavy bass. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, we talk about a lot of thumping lineups. There, that thing is thumping down there. I'm gonna be hearing all this in my sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Cole Calhoun, the batter, takes a strike. Julie works in all kinds of conditions, including. At the club. <laughs> that ball hit well, but Miles Straw's there in the shift. How about Brad Peacock? A one, two, three, fifth inning. All ground outs. Third, short, and second. TK feeling it. Brought to you by Nissan. Here are tonight's clues. Quite a run. Wave goodbye. Six shooter. If you know the answer or you want to guess, send it to at ATT Sports and NSW. Tonight's Name That Astro presented by Nissan. Alex Cintron going over the study of the new pitcher for the Angels as Abraham Toro will bat third in this inning and he'll face a new arm out of the Angels bullpen. It'll be the right-hander Justin Anderson, the Houstonian. He has picked up 51 games this season, 3-0 record, 5.93 ERA out of the bullpen for Brad Osmus, another guy with a 1.64 whip. Averaging 94.7 miles an hour on his fastball, also has a slider and a split. But walks again, an issue for another reliever coming out of that bullpen for Brad Osmus and these Angels. Yeah, the stuff's live. It's a matter of harnessing that command. And so face a lead Miss Diaz who was walked and grounded out. We're tied at three as we play into the sixth inning. Astros trying to wrap up the number one seed in the American League with a win tonight. Just two games going on in the major leagues. Oakland leads Seattle 3-1 in the sixth inning as the A's try and take a step closer to the wild card. Diaz takes a strike inside. It's 1-1. Cleveland had their chances to take a big hit tonight as they got shut out by the White Sox 8-0. He has a swing and a miss, and here are the updated wild card standings. The A's lead Tampa Bay by a half game, and they're winning tonight 3-1, to one, so that could be a full game by the end of the evening. And Cleveland now two games behind Tampa Bay. The Indians will play against the Nationals on the road. Tampa Bay will be in Toronto, and Oakland has a four-game series in Seattle. So Terry Francona's team will have to sweep, it seems, and need some help along the way. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing for my three-way tie scenario that I want to see play out. Yeah, it's becoming less and less likely. But I have the answer if it ever happens. <laughs> we are well prepared just in case. Because yes. things can change pretty quick. Try not to lose the viewers right now, so we're going to avoid that unless it gets a little closer to that possibility. Just missed inside. Anderson wanted it, and he stalks around the mound a little bit. It's three and two. Well, you were, I believe you were in Tampa Bay for one of the more exciting ends to a season when Evan Longoria hit that home run as we see that strike on our MD Anderson strike zone, not a strike on the inside off the edge. Yeah, I was there for game 162. Yep. When the Yankees played Tampa Bay and Boston had a lead in Baltimore, it looked like the Ray season would end. Tampa Bay was down 7 0. They would come back to win that game, and then the Red Sox would lose the game in Baltimore and that ended up being the last game Terry Francona would manage for the Red Sox. Amazing. I was also there in 2013 when they could not wrap up the season in Toronto so they had to go play a wild card tie against the Texas Rangers the very next day in Arlington and the winner of that game then went to Cleveland to take on the Indians in the wild card game. So you've almost seen that scenario. I did yeah. Yeah. So they went from game 162 on Sunday in Toronto flew to Arlington to take on the Rangers won that game game 163 played 
Cleveland the next day won that game mm -hmm. and then went to Boston and got beat in the ALDS. Yeah, I played with the San Diego Padres in 2007 when we played game 163 to get that last spot in the playoffs, but it went to the Colorado Rockies, and they ended up going to the World Series that year. That's a, a little flare in the left center field for Josh Reddick's second consecutive hit. But game 163s are the intensity levels unbelievable. Yeah, I had no idea. I, you know, having played a lot of games in Colorado, it, it's a large ballpark, but having it filled with 50 plus thousand people, I remember playing back in Cincinnati in the late 90s when they were in some contention, and uh, Ed Thomas, he hit a grand slam, and you could feel the earth move literally with as excited as the fans were. But that that game in Colorado was such a roller coaster ride, and having 50 plus thousand people going bonkers and hanging on every pitch, you're right, it's pretty intense. So we'll see how it plays out. If you end up tied with just two teams in the wild card picture, wild card picture, you will not have a play in game or any sort of home field determination with an extra game. It simply goes to the season series. But in those cases that Blummer referenced and I referenced, the two teams that were tied were trying to be the final wild card team, whereas this year, for example, Oakland and Tampa Bay tied and Cleveland were behind them. It would simply go to the season series, which Oakland won. Here's Abraham Toro. Two on, nobody out. Anderson a leadoff walk to Aledmus Diaz. And then Josh Reddick, who now is two for three with a single in the left center field just beyond Angelton Simmons. Toro sends a foul out of play. It's one and one. Astros were down in this game three to nothing. They have come back to tie it on a couple of home runs. Kyle Tucker a solo home run. Jack Mayfield a two run home run. Ball hit hard, but gloved by Pujols. He'll go to short for a run. Return throw, safe. Toro beats the throw. Pujols wants him to check the play. Diaz ends up at third. It's an interesting play over at first base because you had both Justin Anderson and Albert Pujols covering first base. Eventually, Albert Pujols, I believe, may have gotten his foot on the bag. Here you see the return throw from Andrelton Simmons. Some fancy foot action right there with Albert maybe getting the toe on the bag. I think Brad Osmus is going to ask to see that. What's interesting about that is Albert didn't have a chance to stretch to go get the baseball, so he let the baseball travel a little bit, maybe have given Toro an extra chance or an extra step to get that foot down. I think the throw beats Toro. It's just a matter of whether the foot hit the bag or not. I agree with you because it did feel like the baseball beat him. Showing it on the big board here. I think Toro's going to be out. There you go. This is the shot. Well, it's one foot's kind of obscuring the other foot. Is there something that shows definitive? Well, you can see the foot after he makes the catch kind of slip off the bag. Here we this go. This might be a better angle, right? On and then off. I got you. Just a slight hesitation in there as you see that toe on there. But again, it's up to New York if they see what we saw. That will be a double play. Nice job by Pujols to start the double play and finish it by finding the bag. Well, and that's one of the other things. We talk about so many of the accolades and awards that the Astros are going for and personal goals. The double play championship is up for grabs. <laughs> I forgot about that. You're right. The two most prolific teams in a hitting in the double plays. The Astros had the lead on the Angels coming in. That would be number 143. So they have 143 to the Angels 140. The next closest team is in the National League. Martin Maldonado takes a college strike. Martin walked and scored a run last time up.
ball popped high in the air. Foul territory. Smith didn't see it initially. Now he finds it and makes a nice play to end the inning. First and second, nobody out, and the Astros fail to score. We're still tied at three. Including game day activities at Minute Maid Park, craft parties at local hospitals, and much more. For more information and to sign up, visit astros.com slash volunteer. Bottom half of the sixth inning, second inning of work for Brad Peacock out of the Astros bullpen. So we'll go multiple innings tonight, or at least start this inning. The Astros begin the sixth with their bullpen warming up as well as Kevin Smith will lead things off. Smith doubled in two runs in the first inning against the Astros and also flying out to center. First pitch swinging, fly ball, deep left field, but not deep enough as Kyle Tucker is there and puts it away. For the first out of the sixth inning, after three ground outs in the fifth, Brad Peacock one pitch and a fly out to left. You're going to give up the long fly ball to left. This is where you do it in Anaheim, right by that 390 mark. But it's good to see Brad Pe Peacock getting back on the mound for that second inning. Granted, he only threw eight pitches, but it's nice to see him do that little bit of a down up and give A.J. Hinch an idea if he's able to handle that two-inning outing. May have the next day or two off, but kind of a nice sign to see A.J. Hinch putting Brad out there in this situation. Taylor Ward will bat with one out and the base is empty. Ward one for two, single his last time up. Angels and Astros both with five hits and three runs in this game. Slider for a strike. It's 0-2. Astros already eclipsing last year's record-setting total of 103 wins with their 104th win last night. So whatever else they do in this four-game series against the Angels, they will just extend that record. And they also are catching some pretty impressive teams over a three year span beginning oh. in 2017. Yeah they're definitely writing their names into the record books again. They are now up to three hundred and eight wins over the last three years. Three of their four one hundred win seasons in franchise history have been the last three years and they just matched with that last win. The big red machine 74 75 76 and the dynasty of the New York Yankees in the late 90s. Yeah you turn into a franchise where you just mention the Astros of the mid 2015s and everybody goes oh that team was incredible. So now that's kind of how I feel about the Reds when everybody says the big red machine the references those great teams. The ball was hit hard off the base of the wall in left center field Taylor Ward. Has a one out double. AJ Hinch out of the dugout. Brad Peacock will go an inning and a third tonight. And AJ will probably motion to the bullpen. He looked like he came out with a purpose. He does motion, and Brad Peacock's night is over. One hit of the five batters he faces, and Brian Abreu will be the new pitcher. The one out, it's tied. New pitcher on the mound for the Astros before we get to that. The boys discussing how many wins this Astros team has posted in the past three years. This year alone, 104, as they continue to hopefully break their own record with three games following tonight's game. And a lot of celebrating has been going on, guys. A lot of champagne. But once again, after getting their 104th win in Seattle last night, A.J. Hinch stood up in front of the team to address it. He said it should be celebrated. We should talk about and recognize what kind of team we are on because it is that special. And it took a lot of people to put together that many wins. Like I said, they're hoping to get more, but they have to continue to recognize just how special and unique this group is this year. No doubt about it. Best regular season in the history of the Astros, 58 years of Houston Astros baseball. Kian Wong is the batter facing the new pitcher, Brian Abreu. It's an electric right arm of Brian Abreu. Young man can bring it. Got a little heavy on the slider last time we saw him out there, so it'll be interesting to see if he changes his pitch usage as you see his numbers on the season. 
Six and two-thirds innings pitch, ten strikeouts. Nice breaking ball at the top of the zone for a strike. It's two and one. This kind of feels like audition Thursday here in Anaheim. We saw Wade Miley auditioning for the fourth spot in the rotation for the postseason. Brad Peacock trying to prove he's healthy enough to be on that playoff roster. Now Brian Abreu kind of came in as a long shot, but he has been impressive so far in limited action with the Astros. And A.J. having him face a couple of lefties here out of the bullpen. Wong and Coward, a switch hitter, will bat lefty. Wong sends one in the air to left field. And Tucker puts it away for the second out. The key with Abreu is how poised can he be in a postseason scenario? He's a kid who never has pitched at the AAA level, made the jump from AA Corpus Christi to the major leagues. And you showed the strikeout to walk total so far, even though he got behind in the count there, still able to battle and pick up an out. And that might be one of the more promising things is that he still has the stuff if he does fall behind in account or has traffic to get out of a situation with his velocity and spin. Gets the ground ball here. Miles Straw in the ship makes the throw and Abreu does the job coming in out of the bullpen. A fly out and a ground out to end the six. We're tied at three. Astro brought to you by Nissan. Tonight's clues, quite a run. Wave goodbye. Six shooter, the answer tonight. Will Harris made his debut with the Houston Astros in 2015. He was actually claimed off waivers by Houston in 2014. And sixth in all-time appearances in Astros history with 307. And what a season he's having in 2019. One of the true workhorses in a bullpen for anybody in the major leagues. Kind of the unsung unspoken hero in that bullpen putting up great numbers like Todd is talking about speaking of unsung guys the guy at the plate Jack Mayfield tied this game up with a two run home run into the Astros bullpen his last time up Jack hitting his second major league home run and his 28th on the season combined with the minor leagues he sends this pitch into right center field where Cole Calhoun takes care of it for the first out of the inning Angels on with a new pitcher. Jake Jewell takes over in the seventh. Another pretty big ERA, 7.23 on the season. 15 games pitched. Six games this month. That ERA at 7.27, very similar to the career number. Fastball, change up, and a slider from Jake Jewell. Facing the top of the order, Miles Straw. Draw one for three with an infield hit. Straw batting lead off for the second time this year. Some high ERAs coming in out of the bullpen. The Astros are responsible for some of those ERAs. Taylor Cole, who pitched out of the bullpen first, had a 10-2-9 against the Astros. Justin Anderson, a 10-3-8. The Astros have scored a lot of runs against this Angels pitching staff this year, averaging almost seven and a half runs per game during the season against the Angels. Those numbers are pretty impressive, especially after we just got done seeing some of the numbers that the Astros have put on the Seattle Mariners. So doing a lot of work within the division, the Astros. They've scored 10 or more six times this year against the Angels. Counts two and two on Miles Straw.
on the ground in the hole. Base hit. Miles Straw two for four. And the Angels will have to be leery of him in first base with his speed. He's seven for eight in steals at the big league level this year. Brad Ausmus out of the dugout. Jewel facing two batters here in the seventh inning. Michael Brantley, the lefty, due up. And Ausmus will make a pitching change. We'll have a new pitcher when we come back in this 3 3 game. Plays in the Twins, Mitchell, Brian McCann, and Dallas Keuchel. A battery that we saw in the 2017 World Series. They have clinched the NL East with the Atlanta Braves. Mike Byers trying to get the A's into the postseason as a wild card team. And Charlie Morton has had a great year for Tampa Bay as they are also fighting for a wild card spot. You know what's incredible to me is those last three guys, the Keuchel, Fires, Morton, they're arguably the aces of those staffs. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? And Morton for sure has been the ace this year with Snell being injured and Glass now being injured. Dallas, you could say, has been their most effective starter in the second half. And Michael Brantley goes the other way. Line drive. That'll be down for a hit. What a play by David Fletcher to short hop that ball and keep Miles Straw at second base. And that gets by him. It's a run for sure. Give David Fletcher a lot of credit for being a good ball player, but I think he may have gotten a little bit lucky on that one. Ball twisting away from him out there in left field as Brad Ausmus comes out to make another move. But that catch on the short stop on the short hop was a huge play. So that gets past him. Miles Straw scores easy. Didn't get a chance to set it up, but after Michael Brantley grounded out to second three times, you often say he likes to use the other way. And he did that there against the lefty Del Pozo. Did a great job and Miles Straw wanting to go that extra 90 feet, but holds up when he sees that ball not get past. David Fletcher out there in left field. Del Pozo facing just one batter. The lefty Michael Brantley will have a pitching change here as Alex Bregman is due up. Bases loaded. The team celebrates a third straight division title. We'll talk about the season, the postseason, and queue up the top players of the year. All that and more this week on Astros Bases Loaded, only on AT&T Sportsnet. Ticket. All right, Julia. The Angels going to a righty to face Alex Bregman. It's Luis Garcia. 60-second appearance for Luis Garcia. 59 innings, 53 strikeouts, but also a guy who can get wild outside the zone with 32 walks on the season. Bregman a chance to give the Astros their first lead of the night as he takes a fastball at 98 for a strike. Garcia and Hansel Robles throw as hard as anybody out of their bullpen. Yeah, but I remember the conversation we had last time Garcia came in. As hard as he throws, a lot of sliders. Very heavy on the slider, especially against right-hand hitters, and he's ahead of the count here. We'll see if Bregman gets one. There it is. It misses the bottom of the zone. It's one and one. First and second, Brantley and Straw back to back singles. And Alex Bregman, who is grounded out, lined out, and walked, chance to drive in his 111th run of the year with a base hit. Anything to the outfield with Straw on second base should score the run. He loves the moment. He loves the fact that he's going for American League MVP and has four games to put his final resume together. You know he's going to try and lock in on a 2-1 pitch he can drive here. That was the one. He got a little bit quick on it. That was a hanging slider. First time we've really seen Alex get excited. He was sitting on that pitch, got it, just never got to him. And by the time he got that swing through the zone, he was too far out in front. Right there, missed it. Mm. Still got one left, though. He got a cookie. He couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, it's kind of tough when you get those and you can't get near them and you foul them off.
see if he gets another mistake. Tried to hold up on a pitch low, and he goes around, and Alex will not be happy with himself, heading back to the dugout as he strikes out for the second out. Might have been that split. It's a rare pitch that comes in from Garcia, but had good depth on it right there, and Alex frustrated. Not necessarily on that pitch right there that he chased, chased but it was the pitch before that slider that he missed up out of the zone. Kyle Tucker, the batter, will have a little meeting in the mound. If it's not Brad Ausmus, it's the pitching coach Doug White who will meet with Luis Garcia. Tucker is one for three with a home run and a couple of strikeouts. Only time Tucker faced Luis Garcia, he hit a line drive double. There is a right hand hitter, Aledmus Diaz, on deck. Going over the game plan to see how to attack Tucker here. Tucker, who has Home runs and back to back nights. Hit one in his final at bat last night in Seattle and hit one in his second at bat tonight. Put the Astros on the board for the first time. Tucker maybe getting a little bit excited on that pitch down in a 1 0 count. Good job by Garcia feeding off some of that youth and exuberance. Tucker hit 34 home runs, drove in 97 for Triple A Round Rock this year. Round Rock MVP, Kyle Tucker. Two and one. It's a pretty good pick on a pitch well out in front of home plate by Kevin Smith. Garcia has not thrown a fastball since the first pitch of the Alex Bregman at bat. Seven straight sliders or splitters. This Tucker will swing over that splitter. It's two and two. He's got a good one working. If it's working right, it comes out of that hand with that tumbling rotation, but it looks like a fastball as it bottoms out. Pretty good pitch. Same pitch. You got Alex Bregman to swing and miss for the strikeout. Outside, making it three and two. Miles wow, Straw was going to score on a base hit to the outfield either way, but he'll get a head start. Well, if Tucker is able to put anything in play for a hit. The Astros should have their first lead of the night. Straw will be off second, Brantley off first with two outs and a full count. Swing and a miss. Garcia strikes out Tucker to end the inning, getting Bregman and Tucker to end the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time here at Angel Stadium. We're tied at three. Time for us to go back to Houston and our rooms to go lounge. Last night, a memorable night for Zach Grinke in his 10th start as a Houston Astro. Tossed a gem so close to tossing a no-hitter, just two outs away. But eight and a third inning for him last night. 
about as good as he's looked in that Astros uniform or maybe even all year. And the team talking to them after the game really thought he had it, just the way he was in control. He told us after the game that wasn't as sharp that last inning or so. He felt they were hitting the ball a little bit harder. However, he felt really great about the way that he pitched, and that's about as good as you can draw it up in your last regular season start as you get ready for the postseason. Robinson Chirinos catching him there, said going into the ninth, here we go again as he was on the catching end of Justin Verlander's no-hitter earlier that month. Tough for them to, for everyone to see him not get it, but it was a very, very special night to see Grinky get so close. Yeah, broken up by Austin Nola, who wasn't even in the original lineup, came on due to an injury to D. Gordon and had never faced Greinke before. He picked up a hit in his first at bat. Oh, a tough way to end the no-hitter as we have a new pitcher here in the bottom of the seventh. It's Joe Smith. Joe Smith working back from that Achilles injury, doing a good job in 26 games that he has appeared. 1.16 ERA and a very good ground ball percentage with that delivery. Three-quarter to Submarine. He'll face Michael Hermosillo, and then the top of the order, David Fletcher and Angleton Simmons. Angels led 3-0 after the second inning. Wade Miley would retire seven of the last eight batters he faced. Brad Peacock, an inning and a third, allowed one base hit as Hermosillo sends one in the air to the left field. Kyle Tucker comes in a few steps and puts it away for out number one. Our best in Texas power pitcher is presented by your local Ford dealers. These are big numbers again that we're seeing from these pitchers in this rotation. Verlander, Cole, and Granke. They're 56 and 19 in games started by that triumvirate. It's pretty amazing the ability of those guys to go down and shut down offenses and allow their offense to go out there and do some work. But an incredible winning percentage. That is a pace of 121 and 41 on a season. Really? Yeah. Garrett's bored with it. <laughs> well, it's been fun to watch, especially those first two guys all year long, and Zach Greinke since the trade deadline. They will be going head-to-head -head one final time in the race for the American League Cy Young Award. It's kind of exciting to watch. We've had some storyline in play for each of these four starts for the Astros down the stretch, even though they've already wrapped up the AL West. And a chance with one more win to wrap up the number one seed in the American League. We had Wade Miley tonight, Jose Arquiti tomorrow going for the playoff fourth spot in the rotation. You had those two guys, Cole and Verlander, making their final bids to win the American League Cy Young. JV's also got a potential to get to 3,000 strikeouts on Saturday. Cole just really made the race a lot tighter with a brilliant outing in Seattle. And I think it's great that they've clinched the West. Yes, they're going for home field advantage, but at the same time, you know, Bregman, Cole, Verlander, and these guys, they've earned the right to be a little bit selfish here down these last couple of starts, last couple of games to go out and get those numbers to possibly bring home some hardware. And I love it. I, that in competition between Verlander and Cole has been one of the more amazing things that I've seen in a long time between two teammates who go out there and not one guy has faltered. They said, okay, that's pretty cool. Hold my beverage. I'm going to go out here and do my business. <laughs> and they do something amazing. And then all of a sudden, right, you know, four days later, another guy goes out there and does it. It's incredible. Only thing you can comp it to is that Schilling and Randy Johnson season with the Arizona Diamondbacks when they finish 1-2 as Maldonado puts away David Fletcher. Always a tough out. Fletcher pops up behind the plate for out number two in the seventh. Yeah, that was a unique combination in the early 2000s for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Power lefty, power righty. Randy Johnson with the fastball slider. Kurt Schilling was a fastball slider split guy. Here's Angleton Simmons. He's been on base twice, single and a walk, one for two, scored a run. You know what's impressive to me, too, about Verlander Cole is we talk about the similarities in their stuff, but the personality on the mound is so different. You know, Verlander's really that, you know, kind of the business-like mentality where I'm just going to come at you, mow you down, and walk off the field and say, nice day, good seeing you, go home. Whereas this guy right here is just he is looking for a complete obliteration. 
of not just your bat, your stats, but your ego. He wants to take it home with him. And yeah, they both have an incredible competitive drive. And that's kind of what separates the great ones from the really good ones. Absolutely. So true. And Cole does it where he channels that emotions, but he also wears his emotions. And JV keeps it a little more tucked in. That is very true. This ball close to the dugout, but Diaz will have room and a 1 2 3 inning for Joe Smith. We're going to head to the eighth, all tied at three. Alex Bregman wins the AL MVP if he does nothing. He wins it. He should win it. That's how the Astros fans feel. But that war number creeping into second place with 25% of the vote is an interesting one. Fans putting some emphasis on that peripheral. The war number where Alex has done a very good job creeping into that range of eight wins above replacement. Hey, I saw them before the game. Yeah? Yep. Celebrating their one-year anniversary on October 1st. Out here watching some Astros baseball. Very nice. Got the October rain sign ready. Saw a fan earlier with the October rain shirt on. One one the count to a lead Ms. Diaz. Diaz has walked twice tonight and also grounded out. Luis Garcia is still out there for the Angels. He picked up two strikeouts to end the seventh inning, getting Bregman swinging and Tucker swinging. No bullpen action going for the Angels, so this will be Garcia's inning, at least for now, as he's ahead of Diaz, one and two. It'll be a let miss, and then Josh Reddick and Abraham Toro. Well, I think they just got the news. <laughs> Coming in with a three game hitting streak, seven for 10 during that stretch as he fouls one below us. Hit him on the 2-2 pitch, and Aledmus Diaz on base for the third time tonight. A couple of walks and a hit by pitch. Now he wore that split finger. Sometimes getting hit in a two-strike count doesn't hurt so bad. 86 miles an hour. Part of the order has been on base a little bit with Diaz reaching for the third time. Josh Reddick has back to back hits. He's two for three. Reddick takes a fastball for a strike. Not a ton of at bats for anybody in this Astros lineup against Garcia. Reddick's facing the most times, just threes. 0 for 3 with three ground out. This is a line drive over Simmons in the left center field. Diaz thought about going first to third, but he will hold up. Three hits in a row for Josh Reddick in the Astros with first and second. Nobody out. Good piece of hitting by Josh going the other way. Staying on that split finger. Not easy to do, but a great piece of hitting by Josh staying on it, keeping the head down. Line drive over the shortstop's head to keep this inning going. Two on, nobody out. Abraham Toro will bat. Martin Maldonado is due up next. He has not yet reached the on-deck circle. The Astros have some pretty solid options on the bench if A.J. Hinch chooses to hit for Maldonado. Brad Ausmus out after Garcia allows the first two runners on here in the eighth inning. That's one of your options. Jordan Alvarez getting the night off. 
Osmus has a righty and a lefty do up, but he's not sure if he wants to make a move. And if he does go to the lefty, for example, to turn around Toro, you've got guys like Springer and Altuve as potential guys to pinch hit. So he's going to leave the righty, Luis Garcia, in there. Might have been a little bit of strategy talk from Brad Osmus with some of these young infielders working with Albert Pujols and Andrelton Simmons. A possible bunt situation with runners at first and second late in this ball game. Pretty decent runners out there. But you're right, if they eventually do move these runners up, Martin Maldonado, you've got two catchers on your roster behind him. Toro not showing bun, and he takes a fastball for a strike. Caleb Coward, even though he's been with the Angels before, just called up a week or two ago. Kian Wong's playing his first game as an Angel on the infield. So Osmus making sure everybody on the same page here if Toro was going to bunt. Did not show bunt the first pitch down in the count of 1 1. Toro's face Garcia once before hit a sacrifice fly. AJ would like a big hit right here and avoid having to go to those guys on the bench. Ground ball towards the middle. Wong bobbles it. Simmons can't turn the double play. Wong had a routine double play if he flipped it to Simmons, but he bobbled it, and they only get one out. Tell you what, I thought it was just a foregone conclusion that that was going to be a double play for the Houston Astros. And with the bobble, it allows Toro to hustle down to first base. That ball rolls Dan Drelton Simmons. One of the uglier assists you can get as an infielder. Simmons had no momentum by the time he picked it up. And Toro will be on first base. Jordan Alvarez has been announced as a pinch hitter. And Brad Osmus is going to go to the bullpen. For the lefty warming up to face Alvarez, and we'll be back with this pitching. We have ourselves a tie game, 3-3. Runners on first and third. Jordan Alvarez announces a pinch hitter for Martin Maldonado, and the Angels go to the bullpen. To you, Adel you don't say. To Alberto Mejia. Mejia. Left-hander has a fastball. Change up. Curveball slider averaging 93 miles an hour on that fastball, 33 games this season. He has an electrifying 6.75 ERA, 20 walks in 30 and a two thirds innings, and he's got a pretty healthy task in front of him with Jordan Alvarez at the plate with runners at the corners. That is a lot of walks allowed by Mejia, second highest walk percentage out of their bullpen. And Jordan Alvarez, who this year against lefties has hit 327. With a 1,094 OPS, will pinch hit against the lefty, Alberto Mejia. AJ could have chosen to go to a right-hand hitter, but he knows Alvarez can handle lefties as well as righties. Astros with great speed or with speed on third base with a lead Miss Diaz and Abraham Toro reaching on the fielder's choice, missing wildly to the inside corner early. One of that pitch away and almost got the right quad. He throws a lot of sliders to lefties. As he misses in again, it's 2-0. Oh. Well, this is not an enviable spot facing Jordan Alvarez with a 2-0 oh count. And the go-ahead run on third base with one out. Astros have not led in this game. And Jordan takes one outside for a 3 0 count. Jack Mayfield is on deck, but again, AJ has some choices there. We've got Yuli Guriel, Jose Altuve, and George Springer if he chooses. 
Outside with a slider, ball four, four pitch walk to Alvarez. The bases are loaded with one out. Jack Mayfield will head back to the dugout, and George Springer is going to come out as a pinch hitter. Well, as soon as they announce him, I would imagine Brad Ausmus is going to jump out of that dugout. That is what happened. Springer announced. Ausmus out of the dugout. We'll have a new pitcher as Springer will face a righty when we come back. Look at the Jack Mayfield's night getting the start today at short, making a great play to make the catch, helping Wade Miley finish on, off his outing. That was to end the inning. A big play by Super Jack. Here it is, Cape tonight. He hit one to the warning track in his first at bat. Second at bat, got a hold of it. Two run home run to tie this game up at three in the fifth inning. Good night for Jack. A great night for Jack. Great defensive play, tied the game up. He'll be lifted for a pinch hitter here, though, as George Springer will hit against the new pitcher for the Angels with the bases loaded in one out, the right-hander Luke Bard. Still plenty of options out there in that bullpen for Brad Osmus. Luke Bard is on now. 30 appearances this season. 4.47 ERA and 38 strikeouts. George looking to do damage. We talked about how well he and Bregman had been doing against the Angels this season, combining for 15 home runs. Bases are loaded. Pinch runner at first for Alvarez is Garrett Stubbs. And George takes a pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Last grand slam for George came here last season on July 21st against Noe Ramirez. It was his fifth career grand slam. And all of them have come on the road in his career. Down to the count here, 0 and 2. Does your scorecard handle that many pitchers? Oh, uh, you need a second column. And then we're only in the eight. And he's, second column? I've gone through like 15 spots. He's used eight pitchers already. Yeah, I've given up. Seven of them after the starter went four and a third. Another reason why I want to see George get a hold of one. <laughs> Takes that pitch in the dirt. It's one and two. George has four plate appearances against Bard in his career. He's one for three with a walk, and the one hit was a home run. It was a three run home run. Diaz was hit by a pitch. Toro reached on a fielder's choice after a Josh Reddick single. And Garrett Stubbs pinch running for Jordan Alvarez, who drew a four pitch walk. Ground ball towards short. Simmons flips to Wong for one. The return throw scooped by Pujols. That's a double play to end the inning. Springer hits into a bases loaded double play. We're tied at three, headed to the bottom of the eight. A great chance to take the last hitting, but Angels were able to get out of a bases loaded one out jam with a double play. And now the new pitcher for the Astros is Josh James. Josh James faced these Angels back on the 22nd at Minute Maid Park. Went an inning, gave up a hit, walked a hitter, had a strikeout. Did not give up a run in that outing. 98 strikeouts on his season. All kinds of changes defensively for the Astros. Two guys who entered the game last half inning have stayed in. Garrett Stubbs behind the plate, George Springer in center. Pretty much every position has changed with the exception of Abraham Toro at third base. There's the new catcher. Toro's the only one still at the same position. Ledmus Diaz has moved from first base to second base. Miles Straw has moved from second base to shortstop. Kyle Tucker has moved from left field to first base. Josh Reddick has moved from center field to right field. And Michael Brantley has moved from right field to left field. Only Toro still in there in the starting lineup at his same position. James will face Albert Pujols to start this inning. Pujols has walked and scored a run. He's 0 for 2. James delivers a strike.
Pujols. 3,201 hits coming in. Very nice defensive play in this game to turn a double play. James misses with a fastball away. It's two and one. Two and two. So there you go. Only Abraham Toro staying at his position. Everybody else has moved to a different spot. Nobody wants to be near Josh Reddick, huh? No. He's creeping out of the picture. <laughs> But I think it might have been the swing on that previous fastball up in the zone that moved Josh a little more towards that right field line, anticipating Albert maybe being a little bit late on the fastball. Shallow left field. Brantley coming in. And Michael puts it away for the first out. This is the only game still going on as the A's have defeated the Seattle Mariners tonight 3 to 1. Oakland has clinched at least a tie at the end of 162 games with the Cleveland Indians. So their magic number to clinch a playoff spot is down to one. Any A's win in the final three games of that series against Seattle and Oakland. Will be in the postseason. Cleveland losing tonight. So they are now two games behind Tampa Bay. The A's with the win are a game in front of the Rays. Here's Cole Calhoun. 0 for 3, three ground outs. And he takes a strike. We are beyond midnight. Back in the central time zone. It's our favorite time of night. Astros after dark. Astros after dark. Julia hanging out at Club Angel. James is the fifth pitcher of the night for the Astros. The Angels have used eight pitchers so far. Calhoun takes one wide. It's three and one. Calhoun one for four in his career against James the one hit a home run. Missed the fastball the count goes full. Good idea staying away from Cole Calhoun 96 miles an hour. Trying to pull everything. Angels have played some close games lately. They lost to the A's last night, three to two. And Matt Chapman hit a two-run home run in the ninth. They defeated the A's by a three-two score two nights ago. James picks up the strikeout. Out number two. First strikeout for Josh James. 98 bringing the fuel to strike out Cole Calhoun down and away in the zone. Good pitch. So two outs, base is cleared, and James will face Kevin Smith. Smith, a two run double. He's also flied to center and flied out to left. Good 
Slider by Josh. It's 0-1. Josh going with the off speed against Kevin Smith to get ahead in this count. More, more than just a fireballer. The yeah, first one was a changeup, huh? Yep. And the second one doubled up. Got some good depth on it. See if he tries to unleash the fury in the top of the zone or go down out of the zone. Slider bounces. Astros last three innings offensively had first and second nobody out in the sixth. First and second one out in the seventh. First and second nobody out and bases loaded one out in the eighth and didn't score in any, any of those innings. Astros have scored exactly three runs so far in each of these games on this road trip. Two to three, two. You know, the times James has struggled this year, that ball to strike ratio has been closer to 50 50 than he would like. Did a great job getting the first two outs, and that third out just to get through the inning seems to be a little bit tough at times. The ball served into right field for a hit. Kevin Smith two for four on the night. And he's a two out base runner for the Angels. Smith. Keeps the inning alive and Taylor Ward will bad Ward has singled and smoked a double off the base of the wall. Final batter Brad Peacock would face he's two for three tonight. Coming into this series, 87 losses needed to go two and two or better to avoid their first 90 loss season in 20 years. This time they lost 90 was the 1999 Angels team. Finished 70 and 92 as James drops over a strike. It's 0 and 2. For Brad Ausmus and his group that were 54 and 49 in late July. They were 54 and 49, five games over 500. They had just swept the LA Dodgers in a two-game series at Chavez Ravine, and they thought they could make a run at the playoffs because they had Baltimore and Detroit for a seven-game homestand. They would lose five of those seven games to the two worst teams in the American League, the Orioles and the Tigers, and they were never able to recover from there. Swing and a miss. Ward goes down for the final out. A couple of strikeouts in the inning for Josh James, a base hit and one left on. Good slider from Josh James to finish that inning off, get the Astros in the dugout and give them another shot with Straw, Brantley, and Bregman coming up. On AT&T Sportsnet is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Gallery Furniture. Gallery saves you money and delivers today. Ninth inning baseball. 
George Springer, Alex Bregman having a little conversation as we head into the ninth inning with the top of the order due up. Bregman will hit third this inning. It'll be Miles Straw, Michael Brantley, and Alex Bregman to face Luke Bard. Bard was able to get George Springer as a pinch hitter to hit into a double play with the bases loaded to end the eighth. Astros have had great scoring chances the last three innings. They have just not been able to push across the go-ahead run. Straw is two for four, reached on a single his last time up. And he misses the slider from Luke Bard to start this at bat. Bard will throw that slider 56% of the time to right-hand hitters. Throws it again and drops it in for a strike. It's 0 2. Straw hit one home run last season. It came in the final weekend of the 2018 regular season in Baltimore. Not have any home runs on the year in 120 plate appearances this year. This one slowly hit towards Simmons. Simmons knows he has to hurry, and he does to get Straw by less than a step for the first out of the ninth. A couple of ground outs since he's been out there and will now face Michael Brantley. Brantley singled into left in four at bats. Grounded out to the right side three times and singled into left field. That single in the left ended up. Being a do or die play for David Fletcher, and he made the short hop pick. Had it gotten by him, that would have given the Astros the lead because Straw was on base. How about a slider right back to Michael that he can drive out of here? Try and get cute with it on the outside corner and have it drift back over the middle part of the plate. Let Michael get under it and launch it. The shift has gotten Michael three times today. Sitting with 21 home runs. Career high. Instead misses inside with a fastball. It's a 2-1 count. Slider you were looking for, but it was a little low. It's three and one. Is he going to challenge him right here? I would think so. Well, drops wow. in a slider on the outside edge. Hector Rondon and Roberto Asuna warming up for the Astros. Rondon will come in if the game stays tied. Asuna if it's a save situation. Brantley with a hit his last time up now has 177 on the year. Surpassing his total last year of 176 which was the second most. In his major league career he had a 200 hit season in 2014. Hits this ball high in the air to center field he got under this one. Hermosillo drifts back. 
Bradley didn't miss it by a lot, but he flies out to deep center for the second out. Here's a look at our Humana team prevent defense with Alex Bregman coming up and all the MVP talk. We talked about how well he's played third and short at a third base. You can see that plus seven defensive run saved, and it's shortstop doing a great job in the fielding percentage. But we do know that when Carlos Correa can get on the field, they are better defensively and a better ball club. But still a nice asset to have Alex Bregman with the ability to move over to shortstop to cover when Carlos is not on the field. Alex takes one up and in for ball one. Alex doesn't love the inching. He's a guy that likes to be on the field, offensively and defensively. DHing for just the sixth time this year. 0 for 3 with a walk tonight. Alex takes one up. It's 2 and 0. Astros scored all their runs on home runs. Solo shot by Kyle Tucker in the fourth. Two run home run to tie the game by Jack Mayfield in the fifth. That's on the corner for a strike. It's two and one. Bregman sends one to center on a line, but right there is Hermosillo, and that'll do it for the Astros in the ninth. We're all tied up at three. Bottom of the ninth inning, it is all tied up, three apiece between the Astros and the Angels. We're going to ask you to stay tuned for the Astros postgame show presented by Whataburger. The Astros extend their team home run record. Tucker stays hot, hitting that home run to extend that record. Him and Jack Mayfield with big home runs, and Julia going to stick around and get those post-game interviews to keep all of you entertained and up to date with the latest news for the Astros. A lot of changes in this inning. First one we're going to take a peek at is Hector Rondon in on relief for the Houston Astros. A.J. Hinch going to that bullpen as Jake Marisnik is in the game. Michael Brantley will be out as Marisnik goes to center. Josh Reddick to left. We have the Cupid shuffle out there with George Springer in right. Well, Kian Wong playing his first game as an Angel will be the first one to face Hector Rondon. Rondon taking over here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Delivers a fastball off the plate for ball one. Wong came in when Brian Goodwin was injured trying to head first slide into second base which he reached safely with a double but may have done something to the back as he was Helped off the field, reaching for his back. So Wong has been in there as a pinch runner since the second inning and stayed in to play second base. 0 for 2 tonight. Josh Reddick has now played all three outfield positions tonight. Started in center, moved to right field. Now the left fielder. Springer didn't even know if he would play in this game, and he's already been in two different positions. Just missed the outside edge. Keen Wong, Caleb Cowart, Michael Hermosillo. 7-8-9 in the Angels lineup. Wade Miley went four innings tonight. Brad Peacock an inning and a third. All three runs scored by the Angels came against Wade Miley in the first two innings. Ryan Abreu two thirds of an inning. Joe Smith an inning and Josh James an inning. Your 
Rodon was a pinch hitter tonight, drew a four pitch walk, and then was pinch run for. Foul tip caught by Stubbs. That'll be out number one. Rondone strikes out the first batter he faces. Good fastball at 97 miles an hour, blowing it past Wong here as we go deep into the night. Caleb Cowart, 0 for 3 tonight, three ground outs. He grounded out to first, to short, and to second. Astros only playing the Angels two series this year here in Anaheim. Normally you get three series apiece and your home ballpark but this year the Angels were the home team for that series in Monterey Mexico in May so the Astros came here as the second leg of a road trip after Texas out of the All-Star break and here they are for the final four games of the season. Pitch down two and two. Popped in the shallow left. Reddick will have time to get to this one. Puts it away. And there's two away. Coward now 0 for 4. Well, AJ had some plans last night how he wanted to use some guys out of the bullpen. That was changed when Zach Grinke was dealing. Ended up only using his bullpen for two thirds of an inning. Will Harris getting the final two outs. Tonight he's had plenty of opportunities to use some arms out of the pen as the bullpen will go five innings. They get through the ninth and possibly beyond that is Michael Hermosillo will bat. Hermosillo 0 for 2 a line drive sacrifice fly his first time up. Good slider for a swinging strike it's one and one. Rondon ahead one and two. Valiant effort from Garrett Stubbs trying to keep that ball in front. I would imagine he's probably got some fans here coming up from the San Diego area where he grew up, going to Torrey Pines High School and eventually to USC where he was a Trojan. High pop fly. Playable. Springer and Jake. It's George who wants it and puts it away. One, two, three inning for Rondone in the ninth. We're headed to extra innings in Anaheim. Innings tonight. Astros will face a new pitcher. Los Angeles brings on Jose Rodriguez as their ninth pitcher of the night. Rodriguez is a fastball changeup curveball type pitcher. 
Average right around 93, 94 with that fastball. He'll face Kyle Tucker, Ledmus Diaz, and Josh Reddick in the top half of the 10th inning. Tucker hit a solo home run to put the Astros on the board in the fourth inning. It was his fourth home run of the year and his second in as many nights. And Tucker swings the first pitch and sends one on the line to David Fletcher in left field. Hit well, but at the left fielder for out number one. Rodriguez actually made his first major league start against the Astros last Sunday in Houston. Only went a couple of innings. Gave up five hits, three earned runs, had a walk and a strikeout. Facing a lead Miss Diaz who has been on base three times tonight. A couple of walks and a hit batter. This is upstairs for ball one. Astros got into their hotel Southern California here around 3 a.m. last night Pacific time had a little later start getting to the ballpark today a lot of guys like Yuli had the night off Jose Altuve as Diaz sends one way up in the air left side of the infield the shortstop Simmons two away. Two outs, bases empty, and Josh Reddick the batter. Rodriguez was the guy who allowed. The first two of George Springer's three home runs on clinch day. Other than Springer, he fared fairly well, but Springer hit two out the first two innings against Rodriguez. The Astros would go on to clinch the AL West that afternoon on Sunday. Reddick sends one high in the air, but foul. Got under that one on a 2 0 pick. I appreciate the effort and the swing from Josh Reddick trying to get that run on the board with a big swing right there. 2 0 count. Reddick has three consecutive singles. Three for four night going. There's a line drive into center field. Reddick has a four hit night. Josh had a five hit game in Kansas City earlier this month. That's his first four hit game of the season. It's got to feel good for Josh getting that average of 274. Trying to get some momentum going into the playoffs for himself. Josh came in tonight 0 for 11 that extended to an 0 for 12 when he struck out his first time up. But he has turned around at 0 for 12 with a four for his last four. Here's Abraham Toro. Toro looking for his first hit. He has flied out struck out and hit into a double play and a fielder's choice. Leave the zone and takes one down and in. It's two and zero. Oh. Garrett Stubbs waits on deck. Came on as a pinch runner and stayed in the game behind the plate. That one's up. Three and zero oh to Toro. Strike. 
Josh Reddick with four of the nine Astros hits tonight. Miles Straw has a couple of hits. Toro misses the 3 1 pitch, and the count's full. Chris Davinsky warming up in the Astros bullpen. Hit hard, but foul as Reddick was on the move. Josh might have scored pretty easy on that, but Albert playing with that step in a dive range right on the line, almost laid out in foul territory and made that play. Inside, ball four. Garrett Stubbs will get a chance to be a hero tonight as he'll bat for the first time after Toro reaches with a walk. Stubbs coming in, batting 219 on the season, seven for 32 with three doubles. Other than his first major league hit, this one could be the biggest. He's able to come through here with two on and two outs. Takes a strike. Kind of explains the situation we're in with that runners in scoring position. Teams combining for two for 14. Kevin Smith and Stubbs down to the count 0 and 2. Good swing by Stubbs. At first and second, nobody out in the sixth. First and second, one out in the seventh. First and second, nobody out, and bases loaded, one out in the eighth, and the Astros failed to score in all those situations. Just got to find a way to get that guy on deck up. Stubbs goes down swinging, and that will do it for the Astros in the top half of the 10th inning. Two left on, still tied at three. We're back for the bottom half of the 10th inning. Astros and Angels tied at three. The Angels, after scoring three runs the first two innings, have been shut out over the last seven, and now Chris Davinsky comes on in the 10th inning. Devo taking over here will face the top of the Angels lineup David Fletcher Angleton Simmons and Albert Pujols. Devo is pitcher number seven on the night for the Astros. Let's keep trying to make a bid for the playoff roster. Comes on here after Hector Rondon pitched a one two three night. Fletcher has reached once tonight on an infield hit. He's one for four. Eight percent first pitch swing percentage. And he looks at one for a strike. One thing they've done good today is hold down David Fletcher to a one for four. What a great series back in Minute Maid Park. He was coming in on a roll, but really for the last month and a half. Last 38 games, hitting 346. Finishing the season strong, batting 294 right now. Round a bun and takes one outside for a ball two and one.
Evo misses wide, and the count goes to three and one. Bit up or out, ball four, leadoff base runner on for the Angels in the bottom half of the tenth inning. Here's Anderson Simmons. You see, he has had success against Davinsky in his career. It's kind of an interesting one two punch for the Angels here late in the season with a guy. And David Fletcher, who never, almost never swings at that first pitch. And then you get a guy like Andrelton Simmons who could swing early and often. Simmons never strikes out, though. That's the crazy part. Well, if you don't get to two strikes, you can't. 8% <laughs> strikeout percentage is the lowest in baseball. He's got a 1 0 count here. Debo has missed on five of the first six pitches here in the 10th inning. There goes the runner. Ground ball gloved by Devo. Looked at second. But Fletcher on the move allows the advancement. He'll be in scoring position with one out. It was a great snag by Devo. Watch Diaz go to cover second base. So if Devo doesn't grab that, it gets by him. And Fletcher's on his way to third base. So. Kind of a big play, getting the out number one, but also keeping Fletcher from advancing to third base. Pujols. 0 for 3 tonight with a walk and a run scored. See his numbers against Davinsky in his career. Grounds one towards third. That'll be a fair ball. Toro will make the play across for the second out. Fletcher stays at second with two away. Now Davinsky will face the left hand hitting Cole Calhoun. Three ground outs and a strikeout tonight for Cole. Astros will have three on the right side of the infield against Calhoun. Missed the fastball up. It's 0-1. Normally, Davinsky's specialty has been getting outs against left handed hitters. AJ has liked him in the past with that change up against lefties. So he throws it there to get ahead of the count 0 and 2. This year, though, lefties have hit him at a 284 clip, which is higher than we have seen in past seasons. But he's ahead 0 and 2. Fletcher on second base with two outs. Need that COD. Fly ball left field. Josh Reddick underneath it. Now drifts back and he makes the play a little bit more circuitous, but he's still learning to play left a little bit out there. And we're going to head to the 11th. Baseball, Ash Angels tied at three. Angels bunched up their three runs in the first two innings. The Astros scored their three runs in the fourth and the fifth. George Springer had a chance to give the Astros their first lead when he pinch hit in the eighth inning with the bases loaded, but he grounded into a double play. He is facing Jose Rodriguez to start the 11th. Jose Rodriguez is the guy that started the game Sunday on clinch day when Springer hit two home runs against him and two at-bats. 
Starts him off with a slider away for a ball 1 and 0. Springer hit a first pitch home run into the Crawford boxes in the first inning and a full count pitch out in the second. Big swing here for George and he fouls it away. It's one and one. That would be awfully nice if George is able to do something right here, put himself in scoring position, if not more. Now these guys behind him to possibly drive him in. Pitches on the inside, well off the plate. They're going back to those home runs by George. There was that fastball in, he turned on. And he got the hanging slider and unloaded on that one in a pretty good way. Two and two the count. It'll be Springer, then the top of the order, Miles Straw, Michael Brantley. If it gets further than that, Alex Bregman. Bregman already has a bat. Actually, Marisnik's in that two spot now, so Jake's batting third in this inning. Since we've had so much time to surf the internet and come up with numbers and interesting facts. We have a couple of people still hanging with us tonight and Zach on Twitter got to me and gave me something to look up. And do you realize this is the same umpire crew that was in Arizona against St. Louis that went 19 innings? Seriously? How about that? You think these guys are sick of baseball? They had a night game that went 19 followed by a day game. Yes. And now they're here. First game of this series. In the top of the 11th. This crew has seen some baseball. Alfonso Marquez, Larry Vanover at second base, the crew chief. That's a lot of baseball in the span of 72 hours. George stays alive on the 3 2 pitch. Pretty good nugget. I'm digging deep. And it's only the 11th. <laughs> that ball hit well to left field. Did he get enough all the way back? Goes the left fielder and on the corner makes the play. David Fletcher onto the warning track. George bidding for his third consecutive home run against Jose Rodriguez. Didn't miss it by a whole lot. Almost got it. He had a hanging slider. Might have gotten a little bit quick and gotten it off the end of the bat. There was some hope as it went into the corner, but Fletcher did a good job of tracking it down. Here's Miles Straw taking a strike. Draw two for five. A couple of singles. And there's a ball in the right center field. Straw on for a third time tonight. Straw now three for six in that leadoff spot for the Astros for the second time this year. A piece of hitting staying on that slider going the other way with it for miles picking up his third knock in this ball game. Jake Marisnik will bat for the first time Jake came on defensively after Michael Brantley had a one for five night. And he fouls one away. Thirty nine thousand five sixty eight the announced crowd tonight at Angel Stadium. 
Got a heavy load of sprint. I mean, uh, season ticket holders that didn't show up. <laughs> Straw on the go and a line drive base hit by Marisnik. Hit it so hard, though, that Straw had to stay at second base. Jake with a hit in his first at bat tonight. And the Astros with runners on again. Runners on again, and they also have Miles Straw now in scoring position at second base. We know that he can score on pretty much anything, but you're right. Jake actually got a hold of that baseball pretty good. Shooting it into left field at a high exit below. We're hearing MVP chance here in Anaheim. There you go. Right in Trout's backyard. Chance for Alex Bregman to give the Astros their first lead of the night. Astros have stranded 11 runners tonight. Angels have stranded seven. First pitch misses on a close call, and it's 1 0. Alex has walked, but he's 0 for 4 tonight. Hit the ball hard into a couple of outs, lined out to short in the fourth, lined out to center in the ninth. There's a breaking ball outside for a ball. It's 2 0. Right man, right spot. Hasn't been pretty with runners in scoring position in this ball game for the Astros. But you've got speed on the bases and potential MVP at the plate here late. Three and O. Oh, the count to Bregman. Kyle Tucker waits on deck if Bregman reaches. Alex doesn't swing at a lot of 3-0 pitches, but game on the line. He might have a go with this one. Watches it go outside for ball four. Bregman draws a four-pitch walk. That'll load up the bases. Straw to third, Marisnik to second, Bregman to first. One out and Kyle Tucker the batter. We'll bring Doug White, the pitching coach for the Angels out to have a conversation with Rodriguez. Real opportunity for Kyle Tucker to come up big in this ball game right here. In that fourth inning, Kyle Tucker took a big swing, got an off-speed pitch out over the plate, got extended and launched it into the seats. Adding Angel Stadium to his book of places he's hit home runs. I'll tell you what, a sack fly to the seats right now would give him four. <laughs> Tucker facing Rodriguez for the first time in his career. Infield coming in tight here with the bases loaded and one out. Straw with outstanding speed. Even a ground ball with the infield in tight. Straw might be able to score. Foul to plate. Kyle Tucker batting in the cleanup spot for the first time this season. Out, out of play, and Rodriguez ahead of the count 0 2. There's a lot of people at home just getting back from the Jonas Brothers concert that might be able to tune in and watch the end of this ball game. <laughs> getting some Jonas Brothers love? Yeah. Straw singled, as did Jake Marisnik. Bregman walked. Now Tucker trying to give the Astros a lead. Led Miss Diaz waits on deck.
Way upstairs, one and two. Strikes out. Fourth time he has struck out tonight. And there's two away. Bases remain loaded. True outcome. Evening for Kyle Tucker. Changeup gets him to finish off that fourth strikeout. Now Ledmus Diaz. Been on base three times, a couple of walks and a hit by pitch. 0 for 2 officially. Diaz takes a breaking ball up. Diaz played in that game on Sunday when Springer went 2 for 2 with two home runs. He had a base hit the one time he faced Rodriguez. Takes a strike. It's one and one. Rodriguez trying to finish his second inning of work. The Angels don't have anybody in the bullpen, so this is Jose Rodriguez inning no matter what. They don't have anybody warming, I should say. I was going to say, because there's still plenty of arms out there. <laughs> there are bodies out there. That's close to the top of the zone. Rodriguez and Smith wanted it, but called the balls two and one. Looks like it caught the top portion of the zone. Ooh, quite a bit actually yeah, that could have easily gone as a strike long night for David Rackley too. That one is down and away ball three three and one. Kevin Smith didn't do Rodriguez any favors taking that pitch out of the zone. But an opportunity for Led Miss Diaz right here. Ground ball towards short. Simmons will make the play to second in front of the diving Alex Bregman. And the Astros strand three more. They have left 14 on base tonight as we head to the bottom of the 11. Continue to have opportunity. 14 left on, including nine in the last five innings. Last runs for the Astros scored in the fifth inning for the Angels in the second inning. Yeah, some opportunities have gone by the wayside for the Houston Astros. Davinsky in the bottom half of the 11 facing Kevin Smith to lead off. Smith two for four tonight. And he takes a strike. How's Twitter doing? People still hanging in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. i have seen that a lot. Yeah. There are some Jonas Brothers fans watching the end of this one. They also have class tomorrow, so could be some issues out there. Wow. I have a grass stain on that pitch. <laughs> Almost. But if you're in Europe, you're just oh. waking up to Astros baseball. We do have a lot of fans over in UK. Saw one of them in Chicago earlier this year. Foul tip caught by Stubbs. Devo picks up his first strikeout. One away in the bottom half of the 11th inning. Good job by Devo with the fastball up and in. Some off speed early. Fastball is late. Getting the strikeout. There's actually some people. Danny 
on Twitter said that he's even been left on base in this ball game tonight. <laughs> Nicely played. <laughs> Just tweeted that they were still up in Florida. Tamitha hanging with us. Gamers. Astros after dark in full effect. Not quite to that extent, but still here. Disney Disneyland is not very far from here. No. And they probably played a doubleheader today. Disneyland Angels combo. Yeah. So, he may have lost a bet. <laughs> One and two the count. Trying to earn extra points. Whatever it takes, man. These rally hats haven't worked <laughs> since the second inning. So where are we? We had Central Time. We're 10 after 1. People hanging in there. Beautiful. Stubbs has had to make some good blocks behind the plate. Devo bearing that change up. Stubbs working hard even though no runners are on. It's always perfecting the craft. Foul back. It stays two and two. This has become some of the more fun of our West Coast broadcasts, is seeing where a lot of people are from and watching Knoxville, Michigan. A lot of people in Texas. We've got some in Louisiana, Tokyo. Tokyo. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Ground ball slowly hit Toro on a couple of hops. Puts it away. And there's two outs. Staying awake, hopefully, to see Devo take his luggage off the field. <laughs> Did you get your luggage delivered last night or wait till today? I waited till today. Yeah. No, actually, I stayed up last night. Did you? Yeah. I had the urge to come down and get my luggage and sat next to our producer, Carl. I think both he and I were starting to nod off as Julia was on the bench across the way in the lobby, passed out. I had to wake her up and remind her that her luggage was here. So you guys are gamers. You waited for the LAX truck to arrive, yep. huh? Yeah, and it took, it took quite a while. Kian Wong, the batter. Devo ahead of the count on Wong 0 and 2. And based on that last swing, Wong, a rookie, playing in one of his early games of his career, you would think Devo might go right back to that COD, the circle of death. Wong probably hasn't seen many change-ups like that. He does go back to it, but that one bounces in there, and it's one and two. Some people in Bregman's hometown of Albuquerque watching. There you go. Conroe, Kansas. We got, man, we got a lot of people checking in. Love Good. it. Way to hang with us. That sharply hit. Knocked down by Tucker. His throw to Devo in time, and we are going to head to the 12th. Devo carries that luggage off. Of America, what the power to do? Drive a runner in when he's in scoring position. <laughs> 3-3 game, 11 hits, 14 left on base for the Astros tonight. But when the Astros did score, it was thanks to the home run. Big swing from Kyle Tucker. Got things started back there in that fourth inning. In that fifth inning, it was a big swing after a walk to Martin Maldonado. You had Jack Mayfield going deep, tying that ball game up. That's where we sit. Trevor Cahill takes over for the Angels in inning number 12. 
Cahill is the tenth pitcher used by the Angels tonight as Josh Reddick has a four hit game going. Got Sun Valley Idaho checking in. Fairbanks Alaska. Sorry. Let me know when you want me to stop TK. No, you're good. Some interesting places. Reddick had a five hit game in Kansas City on the 19th as he hits one to right field sending Calhoun back. He's near the track. He leaps up. It's over his head. Josh Reddick his second five hit game of the month is a leadoff base runner at the sec at second base with a double in the 12th. How about you Josh Reddick. Pretty impressive two five hit games in one month. Two more than Jose Altuve has in his career. It's got to drive him nuts if we keep bringing that up. But a good job by Josh staying up or staying on that pitch down and getting enough of it to get it over the head of Cole Calhoun. Looked like he had a bead on it, but on our mattress from Super Mode, just out of the reach of that right arm. Reddick had never had a five hit game. Until that five hit game in Kansas City, and now he has two in the span of 11 days. And just had Budapest Hungary checking in. Come on. So let's hope they witness a W right here. You yeah, that's a big one. You getting hungry? A little bit. I'm just glad that my buddy Tuttle brought us cookies. Yeah. That was huge. I had no idea how handy those would come in. Still got any left? I've got crumbs and two whole ones. No, there you go. One Partials. whole one and a three quarters and crumbs. Yeah, those will go good with the milk for breakfast here in a couple hours. See if Toro can move the runner along at the least as he pulls one foul. He's down on the count one and two. Yeah, you would like that to be the worst case scenario that he does roll one over and get it to the right side and allow Josh Reddick to get to third base. It's only 8-18 in Budapest. Hungry. Ugh, it's not Rough a, night. Not a good wrispy night. That one up. Josh Reddick. Five hit game for the second time in 11 days. Wow. Makes it even more impressive. Toro out on strikes. One away in the 12. Slider. Toro. It's a pretty big swing on a two strike count when you're trying to move that runner over. Here's Garrett Stubbs. Michelle Margot and Mike Stanton, they're hanging in there 20 after one. Yeah, that's a tough one. If the Astros can pull this out and get the W, that would be giving them something to talk about. Still a lot at stake. I mean, the Astros would love to wrap up that number one seed tonight in the American League. AJ just looking for somebody to get a hit with a runner in scoring position. Garrett Stubbs. Struck out in his lone at bat. And he's down on the count here, 0 2. George Springer's on deck. Springer thought he had the night off, and he'll bat for a third time, it looks like. Stubbs punches one up in the air. Caleb Coward, the third baseman, puts it away for the second out. After a leadoff double by Reddick, a strikeout and a pop up, it'll be up to George Springer. Okay. 
lone hit with a runner in scoring position was the hit that tied this game, the two run home run by Jack Mayfield in the fifth. Springer batted with the bases loaded and one out in the eighth and grounded into a double play against Luke Bard and then hit one deep to left field his last time up against Jose Rodriguez, but caught by David Fletcher as he crossed onto the warning track. Springer 5 for 16 with a home run against Cahill in his career. Down and in, two and one. Astros have had all kinds of runners on. Bases loaded, one out in the 11th, couldn't score. Lead off double in this inning. Springer now with a 2 2 count. Astros have had double barrel action going. Work to Asuna warming up again in case the Astros score a run. Joe Biagini also warming up. Three and two the count to Springer. Miles Straw is on deck as Springer reaches. Two righties warming up for the Astros. Soon is pretty much in hold mode at this point, waiting to see if George can come through here. Yeah, I think Osuna was loose in the ninth. Yeah. Tough ninth for the closer of the Astros. The anticipation of the Astros being able to close out this game and score a couple of runs. Ball four. Springer draws a walk. Astros will have two on with two outs and Miles Straw already with a three hit game. Chance to put the Astros in front. Straw has had two three hit games this season has never had a four hit game. Reddick and Springer, the base runners here in the 12th inning. by Kevin Smith it's 2 and 0 oh. I'm with you Yuli Yuli was my bus buddy today was he yep just the two of us on that late bus coming <laughs> over he was beautiful you really stretch out <laughs> was it really just two people yep barely qualified for the carpool lane <laughs> nice breaking ball drops in for a strike. It's two and two.
Runners on the go, and they'll both get a stolen base, I believe. That was fun. I think they'll call that fielder's indifference since it's a tie game. So give Redick a steal. That'll be his fifth. George picks up stolen base number six. Counts three and two on straw. Jake Marisnik on deck. Miles reaches. Holds up on a pitch down and away. Cahill walks straw. The base is loaded for the second consecutive inning for the Astros. And for the third time in the last five innings, at some point, something has to give. Thought it would be Kevin Smith, but he did a good job of smothering that pitch and not allowing Josh Reddick to come in. Because if that ball skates by him, you know Josh would be anxious to head home and push that run across. Jake singled in his lone at bat tonight. Down on the count, 0 and 1. Jake, 2 for 4 against Cahill in his career, and also reached on a catcher's interference once when facing Cahill. That'll work. I'll take it. <laughs> Anything. Let's get the run in. Down for a ball, one and one. Bases loaded in the eighth, bases loaded in the eleventh, bases loaded in the twelfth. Now it's one and two. Colin shaved before the game. <laughs> now has a full beard. Stranded 17 on the night, including 12 in the last six innings, and still 3-3. The Astros, the Angels, and runners left on base, many of those in scoring position, 17-7 to tonight. The Astros' bullpen has done the job after Wade Miley pitched four innings. They have come in and shut down the Angels the rest of the way. Yeah, the bullpens are doing a good job. That's why we're playing deep into the night here. Joe Biagini is... The next pitcher in line for the Houston Astros. There you see him. He pitched in a game on the 25th, I mean, on the 21st against the Angels. Only went a third of an inning, throwing 12 pitches. Got out of it unscathed, trying to keep this game right where it's at. At some point, the offense has got to push a run across. And just way too many opportunities wasted tonight. Josh Reddick trying to single-handedly win this game with a five-hit night, including a leadoff double in the last inning, but he was unable to score as Biagini has missed on the first two to Caleb Coward. It'll be Coward and then Michael Hermosillo in the back to the top of the order. Coward batting for the fifth time, 0 for 4 tonight. And Biagini has missed on his first three pitches. Debo did a nice job. He walked the first battery face, but then retired six in a row in two innings of work. And the 
there's a strike. Tower batted right handed his first two times up and left handed his last two times. And now the count goes full. Stairs, ball four. Cowart lays off on a high fastball and draws a leadoff walk for the Angels. Just the third base runner for Los Angeles in the last five innings. And Hermosillo will bat. He's got to lay one down, doesn't he? He never had a sacrifice in his career. Does have some speed. And Eugenie misses away. Hermosillo drove in the last run for the Angels back in the second inning on a sacrifice fly. Picks up a strike call on that one. It's one and one. Eugenie may have been given a favorable call there on a pitch that might have been inside. Struggling with that fastball command here to the first couple of batters. Runner on the go. Pitch is taken for a strike, and the throw is in time. Wow. Cowart does not slide and gets tagged out by Aledmus Diaz. If you're going to steal a bag, you've got to get down and slide. You cannot assume. That was unbelievable. I know it's late and we're all struggling a little bit, but there's no reason to pull up right there if you're Caleb Cowart. They're going to review this. Does he sneak that foot in there? Yep. He might. Wow. That is going to be extremely lucky for Caleb. It's going to be safe. Unbelievable. Just really no reason to go in the way he did, but he did a two one two one count. Correct. There's not. I mean, it's not even a chance at a ball four or something happening. I'm not even sure what told him internally to slow down. I don't think Caleb Coward is convinced he's safe. He's standing on third base waiting for the review to end. Kind of wandering back towards second base. But I think he's going to end up being called safe, and that's a very fortunate thing for the Angels and Caleb Coward. Good thing for the Astros is that this is taking longer than I thought it would. I, yeah. I think that helps put some doubt, maybe. I thought if it was a quick call, they would have called him safe. I still think he's safe. He is. Thuggerdan has a stolen base, and it's a 2 2 count on Hermosillo. Coward, fortunate.
That is just the third runner in scoring position for the Angels since the second inning. And swing and a miss. Biagini picks up a strikeout of Hermosillo. That is the first out of the inning. A tight slider down and away, away from the swing of Hermosillo. Now Fletcher, who is one for four with a walk, he'll bat. Line drive, short hop. And play the first by Aledmus Diaz for the second out. He has backed up on it to make the play for out number two. Coward moves over to third. You know it's late in the night when you've got David Fletcher swinging at the first pitch. That's right. Eight percent first pitch swinger. And swings at the first pitch. Hit it pretty well. But out number two. Now Angleton Simmons will bat. Simmons sharply hit off the glove of Tucker in the right field, and that'll be the ball game. Angels walk it off in 12 by the final score of 4 to 3. Angleton Simmons hit it sharply. Kyle Tucker has not played a lot of first base and could not come up. With that line drive, and the Angels win the first game of this four game series. We will have more, including the post game show, coming up after this.